clap, clap. We did a clap. It was cool because we did a clap. Okay, we can probably start now, huh? Right, ladies hey. and gentlemen, we are officially going into the second ever episode of what is now called Fake Cast because we are unfortunately not creative enough to come up with a better name. We and used to have a, uh, an idea for a podcast called Ben and Josh Get Drunk, but then which, we got too drunk. Yeah, we got... we. We got too drunk several times and never actually made finished like five the podcast, pilot so episodes. You're gonna want to talk into that microphone there, fella. I made like five pilot episodes. I think they heard me. You're still not talking into the I microphone. I think that they can hear me. I don't think they can hear you. Why don't you go take a look? I don't think anyone can hear you. Why don't you take a look? I'm not I'm not gonna look at anything. You should just talk into your microphone. I am I'm talking into anyway, it. ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna start off this episode with a celebratory shot to polish off the bush mills. By the way, all of the bottles in our household currently look like this because quarantine has made us into alcoholics that we were definitely not before. No. no. Speaking for myself. Complete 180-degree change, actually, in behavior. Yeah, it's strange. Now we sleep till horrible it's a hours. horrific uh, social experiment. All right. Being undertaken by our overlords. There you are, fella. Here's to COVID. Ah, good times in these. How's your, how's your quarantine? Mine? No, I was talking to the camera. Aren't you supposed to talk to this camera? Which camera do you talk one. to? Well, I can't talk to this one. Then I have to turn really awkwardly. I can talk to either of these bad boys. Anyway, let's get straight down to the content, ladies and gentlemen. This episode's <sighs> Mary Fuck Kill. Yeah, this is everyone's favorite. I think it... Everyone has a favorite segment by now. We've put out one episode, yeah, so... But I think everyone likes this segment because it's just us trying to not completely get ourselves... Right. ...canceled. By the way, I drink White Claw because I'm a man. Yes. And for no other reason. This this episode brought to you by Sponsored White by White Claw. We love our sponsors. Um, all right. So for this episode's Mary Fuck Kill, for the uninitiated, we play a game called Mary Fuck Kill, which everyone has played, but we do it with three I've songs. I've never heard of this game. How <laughs> is it played? Right. So we pick three songs, hopefully recent releases, although, you know, we'll probably go for older releases at some point. And... They're local bands, uh, again, recent, and we choose which one to marry, which one to fuck, and which one to kill. And you have to put each one into one of those categories. So for this episode, we have a brand new release called Broken Record by Mechanical Roots. Um, MR. MR, Mr., for short. We call them Mr. because we love them. <laughs> um, then we have also a pretty fresh release called Do What I Want. Yeah, this shit's fresh. By Laced in Blue. Shit's fresher than the celery at Subway. And then we have Long Beach Vacation by Karma Vulture, which, for anyone who knows me, knows I'm in the band, but this recording He's came not on this before recording. I was in the band. I'm not on this recording. It. it is not me playing drums. We would have done their more recent uh, recording of Dream Eater. Right. But I did the music video for that, so we felt that would buy us. That's exactly, yeah. That that's, well. you know... Anyway, also, so Long, Long Beach is just better. Josh Loney talking to the microphone. It's you'll fine, get, man. You'll get lost. They're gonna lose you forever. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Josh. Hey, hello. Give me your, give me your opinions. I don't have opinions. I don't know who you think you're talking. About. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I forget. I'm you're, a very you're meek, Josh. Not opinion. No I'm a opinions. Very meek Loney. fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Very meek. Very. Meek. Um. All right. Well, Mary fuck kill. Mechanical roots laced in blue. Karma vulture. Okay, so it's tough. All, all pretty new releases, right? All very new. Yeah. Karma Vulture just put out that loud as fuck EP, so. Mechanical Roots uh, recorded their song with Rev9. And yes. And that Danny means Ballistocky it sounds fucking great. And, Balistocky, yeah. And, Is there an N? I forget. No, it's Balistocky. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's like uh, Mr. Bialystock. And Bialystock. Adam Ellison. Adam Ellison, yes. The boys of Rev9 <laughs> Recording Studios, they're, which they're the best. are like the nicest there. people in the world and courted us for a long and time. And they do to a great job. To get us to record an album there, and we didn't. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We did our last one. It does. It sounds fantastic. They do. They do great shit. I, I actually Kev them, sent me. Did he send you the album too, or just yeah, me? yeah? <laughs> but he Dang, sent it. I thought he, it was special. This motherfucker still has not put his album on Bandcamp. By the way, I yeah. Just wanna, you should last, remember sell, last episode. You should sell your music. Um, yeah, money is good. But anyway, okay. So they they did a great job. With they the sent me. Here. Yeah, they sent me the whole album. I listened through it twice, and it sounds fucking good. 
Yes, it's their... Adam. Adam and Danny murdered it on production. Yeah, and they've yeah. they really got the vibe for Mechanical Roots, especially because that's you know it's kind of like pop rock. Like it's definitely I mean? going for like a like Kings of Leon pop. It's like accessible rock, right? I don't, I don't know about pop because it's still they. It's, yeah, Kev, I could. I they could, I could want girls to like their music. What you don't want girls to like your music? No, I, I absolutely do. But the only girls who like our music are probably a little crazy. Yeah, they have tattoos and piercings. Yeah, and right. Daddy like, issues. They're tr- he's trying to get like college girls who Good think girls. it's crazy to drink like three shots of tequila. Yeah, I just. I, oh my god! It was that second margarita drunk on and my I'm, third shot of tequila. I can't even and believe did you hear I'm the new mechanical you. roots. It's crazy. That's kind of the audience. Okay. Partially. I mean, it's it's ex- and the, it's produced well for that. It's by accessible. The way. I remember, I remember like a year or two, probably two years ago at this point. Whenever I was kind of getting to know Kev, uh, who is Kev the singer while, of yeah. Mechanical Roots, he's a fantastic person. Great singer too, by the way. His vocal production and his vocal performance, I think, has come a long way yeah. since we met him. We met Kev when he was still in Strange Heart before Mechanical Roots was even a thing. Yeah, they were not good. But he's always been a dope. I thought they were all right. I actually. think he's he's one of my favorite local guitarists. And to show off his guitar skills, they put a bass solo in the song instead of a guitar solo. Well, that's kind of the sort of there's band a lot of there's a lot are. of guitar solos on the album, but in this song there is not. There's a bass solo, which there is a bass solo as a bass. So okay, so when we come when we judge some of these songs, it's obviously a lot of personal preferences here. I never, ever, pretty much want to hear a bass solo ever and this is coming as yeah, a bassist me neither usually primus because is one of the few bands that can pull it off primus can pull it off yeah. name another that's it yeah like not even cream <laughs> really right bass solos well the bass is holding down the there bass. should be a guitar solo and the bassist should be killing it yeah during the guitar solo. it's a tough sell especially when you know? you're going into like a powerful section of a song and the bass starts yeah r- i don't like it when rush now. does it that's not to say it's a bad solo. Although it, it's not it's my a, favorite it's a solo. Great, listen, technically, he's a great player. The tone is... I have no complaints about yeah. the playing on the solo. Yeah. I personally am just not into bass, bass solos. solos. generally. For me, yeah. what I want to hear from bass playing is, is, is just, is it fat? Yeah. Does it groove? Yeah. Does it, is the tone cool? Right? Yeah. Like, it's all about just being big right. and, and sexy, no matter what I also is. I also think the lyrics are... A little flimsy on broken record. Um, I think that that's I don't because think, you you and I both are very I don't think, much against inspirational lyrics. I don't think this is an inspirational song. His his he's saying his name is broken record. He's going to keep repeating. But it's self affirming. I, I guess I, I didn't pay that close of attention. To the I've lyrics, got so much to lose. In this path that I well you, exactly it's like, Yo, man, the I'm lyrics, going for it right. and I'm not going to stop going for it. Well, right, but the the lyrics. Put me in a shoe commercial. The man. lyrics are just a little on the nose, in my opinion. Right, but, but they're they're not like. It's very hard to do bad. inspirational yeah. lyrics without I being a little on the nose. Think this isn't is it? an inspirational song. I don't see it. I think a lot of Kev's songs are kind of like that vibe. I, I think it's got the vibe of you know, believe in yourself. Yeah, for sure. But I don't see a problem with that. It's it's hard to do those lyrics in a way that doesn't turn me but, off. But that's what I'm saying. But yeah. in in this song, it's I very don't, difficult to do that subtly. I'm not really super turned off by the lyrics. I guess um, no, they they generally are not. Well, okay, the focus so. in the way it's produced. No, but his voice is produced very out. It's front. produced great, but like, uh, yeah. but it but there's good and yeah, effects. Yeah, I don't. I wonder. I wonder what microphone. It's more about melody than lyrics. I wonder. Yeah, exactly. The lyrics take a. Take a back seat, it seems, uh, which isn't a bad thing. I think they probably should. I wish more songs of, would do that. Yeah, exactly. We'll probably get to. Speaking of lyrics, uh, Laced in Blues, Do What I Want. Uh, I hate the lyrics. Um, but <laughs> that being said. It's I, a pretty c- good chorus. I love the song. Um, and the, once again, the vocal melody is great. The vocal production is. Vocal production, I like a lot. It's you good. It's, it's, dry, too dry. Guess, huh? it's too dry. It's too dry. Yeah, it's dry and very upfront. But, but I get that Do What I Want. The, this was recorded at um, uh, Seho's... Uh, Fourth Street. Fourth Street. Who did, they did a great job, which, I think. Yeah, the production just is... just sounds warm. That room, we went to that studio. This is uh, Fourth Street Recordings, is that what it's called? Fourth yes, Street. it's on Fourth Street. Yes, in Santa Monica. Um, and uh, we went and toured that room. If we had the money to be able to afford recording there, we probably would. Um, because that live room... Yeah, the look, the feel, the sound of it. Obviously, they have a good board. Listen to this song, uh, "Do What I Want" by Laced in Blue. It's so, and it was mixed by a guy at Capitol Records. Was it? Yes. Sweet. 
So, I mean, they... Whoa, a guy at Capitol they, Records. No, wow, well, <laughs> dang. They had full access to the best equipment. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You it sounds I mean? It sounds amazing. I mean, I just think the engineering and the mixing is incredible. Um, I mean, it... it I think In that there should the be more... In terms of the production, I think that's my favorite of the three. I think I would agree with that. And that's not even because I think that... I don't know. Broken Records produced pretty broken well. Records I think Broken great. Records, Broken Record is honestly produced. It sounds it's produced to me, perfect for what it is. No, I think I think Broken Record is produced with a little more love than Do What I Want. Personally, I, there's a little more layering. Like Do What I Want is very clearly live. There's not a whole lot of guitar layering. There's a little bit of vocal layering. I agree with that. Um, so I like the vibe of the Broken Record a little bit more, but. I think I agree, just yes. in terms of a fidelity perspective, do what I want probably sounds the best of these three. Long Beach Vacation sounds easily the worst of these three. Yeah, which like, is a shame. When we listened to all three song. of them yeah. and Long Beach kicked on, it was like whoa, you mm. know. And you know what, yeah. dude? Like, it's quieter. It's muddier. It's oh my god! I've so been there though. You know, Connor. Like, we, from, we have like albums where like I'm literally like, dude, hi, what, guys, what would it if I personally myself paid to remaster this just because I fucking hate it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Just because, like, I know that at the time we didn't have the resources or whatever, but I'm like, oh, these are good songs and they could sound better. Yeah, like, so I can I empathize. Well, I, no, 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 I I'm not. Mostly I'm, the I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it sounds like the master is a it's little muddy mix, crappy. but that could work with a good master. Yeah, it yeah. might, it might be, which is a shame because I think of these songs, Long Beach, my fi vacation is my favorite song. Songwriting wise, it's probably Purely my favorite on yeah. on just a song basis. So this is Long Beach Vacation by Karma Vulture, which. I am a member of, but I was not a member of when this was made. When they wrote it, or yeah. when they were. I'm not. I'm not in it. I have it. nothing to do with it. I just drum really good. And actually, we uh, we will have a live version of this song and everything that we played at the satellite with the absurd. Um, and I've did a video for it. Yeah, I mixed it and played drums on it, and he did a uh, live video for it. By and the way, have that up. It's going to be sweet. While we're on that, and it changes the performance a lot, honestly. Because, you do, yes, because, because you're a you're a caveman. Yeah, Nick is Nick is not a bad drummer. He's just seemingly inconsistent. He's a very inconsistent drummer. Yeah, yeah. Because his drums on the song Karma Vulture are amazing, and everything else is just like, why would you do that? Have you that? ever seen the movie Pinocchio? Yes, I've seen the movie Pinocchio. Pinocchio. I feel like... like we, the, we eventually have to say which ones we're going to The anima fuck, of Nick kill. as a drummer is kind of like Pinocchio at, the, at like the circus, where like he kills it. At first, he's like, I got no strings. The whole, and everyone's like, woo! And then he fucks it up, and the guy just kicks the shit out of him, and he's like, you're a piece of shit, and you suck. It, like, just vacillates. Fascinating. So which ones are you going to fuck, marry, and kill of these three songs? Okay. So. Now, have, we, have we analyzed them properly? I mean, well, I, I, I think. analyzing them. I wanted yeah. to analyze them before I. Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of changing my opinion as we so, talk. So we, by the way, the format for us is to just listen to the songs right before we start talking about them. Yeah, I mean, we'll we've, we've, everything, we've heard them usually, but like now we're actually listening to different elements and we haven't really made up our minds on, you know, which ones we're actually going to do. Here's what I'm going to say about Long Beach okay. va Vacation. Okay. Is that in terms of the actual playing from the guitar... In terms of the guitar part, it's got uh -huh. it's got probably my favorite guitar part of these three songs. Yeah, uh, Jerry's guitar or whoever's playing guitar Jerry's, on Jerry's uh, guitar is that "Do What I Want" sick. by Laced in Blue. Da -da 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 in terms of just how it's hitting and the heaviness, Laced in Blue wins there. In terms of what I think fits the song best, like in terms of the production, analyzing this is what the song is. Yeah. This is how we achieve it. I think that Mechanical Roots is the best, right? Okay. But the thing is... So Mechanical Roots is the best at doing what it wants with the song. Production-wise. Which is funny because Lace and Blue is called Do What I Want. That's... <laughs> hi -oh. Hey! I mean, Lace and Blue is pretty close, actually. That's the best produced Lace and Blue song ever so far. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's honestly probably my favorite Lace and Blue song, partially because of the riff. The band, Lace and Blue, is not a singer-songwriter band. They are a band. They're a band band. They're like a yeah. jam band, right, right. right? In that, like, it's about how they play together. I think that, like, for instance, you were saying you thought the last chorus at the end was unnecessary, right? Um, and yeah, it definitely I like is. it because it's like, hey, yeah. let's hear that thing, but it's like with the band playing it different in the halftime. Yeah, and, it's and just, the song's it's, just about hearing the variations on the different. Nah, elements. after after the jam, after the jam, kind of at what should be the end of it, you don't. That's already conclusive enough. It's like a cool kind of halftime jam. 
and then you get the do 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 do. It's you know it's already taken you on enough of a journey that you think the song is peaking basically, and it's already climaxed, and then you don't really need a resolution or a falling action, maybe a small yeah. coda. But that's already you've already gone through verses and choruses. They've already done them a little bit different. We've already gone on a musical journey. So I'm not, I'm not waiting. Honestly, the catchiest part of "Do What I Want" isn't the chorus. It's, no, it's the exactly. That's what you're waiting for. So they already end with a jam on that, and then they bring us the chorus in halftime, and it's like, all right, too long. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah, but you don't think that's how I feel about it live too. Like boo-boo, I think it's great. I think it's great. I just think in the context of songwriting, it's a bit much. It's just a little bit of overkill. Which I, I think you're saying. I think bands, honestly, it's yeah, hard for I them. I like the vocal production on this song, actually. I like it, too. I, just, I like the finally just, decided, whatever they're doing to her voice it's there. It's just too, too, a little too dry. I think a little bit more could have, done in, could have been done in terms of automation on, like, delays and reverbs over the course of the song. You yes, can hear some of it. That's but, true. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, it sounds great. I don't know what mic they had her sing into, but I want to sing into that mic. You know what's also odd to me is that... So which one are you going to marry, fuck, kill? Hold on. I'm, all right, fine. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, okay. Damn, that's tough, dude. Because the thing is, when we're, ta- when we're doing this segment, just for, so everyone knows, what we are talking about is not just the song itself, which means if we were just talking about... Well, right, it's the songwriting. It's live. I'm at a show. I see these three songs. Which one is the song I'm going to be the most stoked on? It's definitely Long Beach Vacation. Oh yeah, for sure. But as a recording, I think I got to kill it. I agree because Long Beach. It sounds like you can hear the song. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You, can, you can tell, like, hey, this is a good song, and you feel everything you need to feel. It kinda, seems. It seems. But it's the most underdeveloped. It's the most muddled. It, it, as a recording it feels the most like a demo of these three songs yes yeah um i it's mean it's like that's a song that if if karma to me ever gets specific, a, a record deal they should fucking re-record yeah asap 100 percent. yeah um well to me it just feels like i mean of course i'm drumming for them now so i hear the drums and i'm like but even looking at it is the, the drums i do it's no, not the, the, dr- song, the drums are not what bothers me necessarily. to me to me a, you could the production is what bothers me most. The reason yes. that I would kill this song is because the production... Wait, are we agreeing on the song to kill? We are, I think. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, I I would kill it just because, again, the production, it's such a good song. And, and when you hear it now, when you hear it live, even after, even with Nick still playing in the band, I heard it live and it sounded yeah, better than it better. does here. Yeah. The production is just lackluster. I think the master... Ooh, we should see if they want to get that stuff remastered by Grant. By Grant, Grant does a good job. He might if they have Anyone the remaster files. Grant Cornish, guy. ladies yeah. and gentlemen, he is a badass. Um, we had but, him, oh but yeah. the the later. thing is, like, if you listen to the Karma Vulture song, um, that's the best recording on that album. But it's but, also, but it's, it's partially too old because to... Nick just kills the drums. He kills it. It's the only time I've ever heard him kill the it. song Karma Vulture by Karma Vulture. Yeah, yeah, I've I've talked to a bunch of drummers about that because we've all seen him live and it's like this guy's fucking up left and right. Just dropping his sticks. Just just fucking up. And uh and on that song, it's like, holy shit, this is a really good drum part. Like and and it doesn't bother me. So the reason I'm talking about the drums and the vocals on Long Beach Vacation on this, What are you saying about the vocals? I'm saying they're a little underdeveloped. I know how Connor does them live now. Right, and he doesn't. He ch- he's changed it because I think that they recorded. Sometimes when you hear it back, man, you know what you they recorded. The, well, I think they recorded these a long ass time ago, and um, you know, I I don't know if they were completely live or how they did them, but I forget the guy's name. They 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 Jason. told me who. Yeah, Jason something. Um, I don't even know if it's a bad mix. It sounds like the master is just when you listen to it's these, good enough when you're when high. you listen to broken record and, and do what I want rock. and Long Beach Vacation and Long Beach Vacation is the last one you listen to. You just notice that the recording quality and production just isn't there. It doesn't suit the dirtiness of the song. It's not loud enough. Yeah, it's hmm. just the production seems to be killing it for me. So which one would you fucking marry then? Because we already figured out which one to kill. Sorry, Karma Bulger. I love you guys dearly. I'm in your band, so you know that. But <sighs> Okay. By the way, we're doing live recordings with Karma Vulture, and we recorded a new album with Grant Cornish, and it sounds 
fucking amazing. I wouldn't, no, that was, I wouldn't kill it. You recorded it with... I mean, not Grand Cornish. With Norm. Norm. Norm Block. Yeah. Normito Block. Of Warpaint. At uh, Happy Ending Studios. Yeah. Yes, he's worked with Warpaint and a whole bunch of people. I thought he, um, wasn't he in it? I don't know. I don't know what the story is. He's there. in something. Whatever. Yeah. Either way. Uh, okay, so you know what? I'm... I wouldn't I'm, kill I'm finding myself songs, surprised here, which is that I thought I was going to do the inverse, but I think what I would fuck would be Do What I Want by Laced in Blue in that it's got the sexiest groove, you know, the best. It, in terms of what is my favorite part, just my favorite single element of any of these three songs, it's the boo doo ba da do doo ba da do da da Yeah. And I think the way the band kills it, but in terms of if you want to marry a girl, you want the complete package. You want someone, because it's apparently the 1950s, who can do the dishes, take out the trash, and raise the children or whatever. You know what I mean? You want someone who's they would got all the, all the fucking attributes, right? I don't really love the songwriting. I think in terms of songwriting, uh, Broken Record might be my least favorite. I, but I think in terms I'm with, of the I'm production there, yeah. and the... Actual execution do you want of the record, yeah, of rhyme? course I do. Yes, and the actual execution of the uh, recording, that recording is done exceptionally well. So I would say that as a recording, that's the one I'd marry because it's it's more well rounded. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna beg the differ here. Oh, interesting. See, this what you're about to argue for is what I originally thought I was gonna go with before well, we were talking. You were you were right. You before. persuaded me to disagree with you. Think about that. Huh? That's weird. All right, well, what are you going to do? Um, so, <laughs> in terms of marriage being something that you're going to have to sleep with for the rest of your life, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with do what I want. Okay, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> and I, I got to be able to fuck this thing again and again. Right, I got it's a return customer kind of thing. See, I was thinking I will, of like a marriage where you get bored of I each will, other after a couple of years. But you're just too lazy. I would get to way get out of it. Way more bored of Broken Record. That's what I'm saying. Because it's a more conventionally written song, honestly. I agree but, with which, that. by the way, is not to say that it sucks or anything. I like conventionally written songs. I just think that mm. I'm I'm. There's a little more panache. See, I to thought that a marriage do what I want something that like laced in blue. You're like this is the correct choice. I don't care what you think of marriage, but it's not. I, I care. Right, you what know I what I mean, though. Marriage. No, I care to explain my thoughts. No, um, I'm, talking, I'm talking about how we evaluate this for the I future. I don't care. Um, I think do what I want. It's just it. The production rips. Honestly, who I mean, would be a better mother? Is what Rev I'm thinking, Nine. You know, Rev Nine um, <laughs> killed it on the production for Broken Record, yes, but indeed, do what I want. It's, there's something about they they capture the live feel really well. There's a lot of fucking energy there. Um, the fidelity of the recordings is just amazing. Uh, yeah. I again, there could I'm, be more layering on the guitar. I'm sorry, Kaylee. Kaylee is the singer of Laced in Blue, who I love dearly. I don't like the lyrics at all. Um, that being said, I like the melody, and she killed it on the um, vocal delivery. Um, do you really though dislike those lyrics so much more than Broken Record? Because I I di I think yes. I dislike them equally. No, I, I dislike Do What I Want. I more think they're equivalent terms equivalent of lyrics. lyrics. No, Broken Record is Broken Record is just cookie cutter boring lyrics. With How a, is that not with, though a very with bad a dash thing? with a dash of cringe? Do What I Want is cringe lyrics with a dash of cookie cutter. Okay. <laughs> even if we accept that is true, here's where they even out is that I don't... By the way, for anyone who thinks I'm being dicks to my friends, people shout fuck the absurd at the absurd shows, so... Also, I just wish people would rip apart our lyrics. I mean, it would be great to hear. Yeah, also, good luck, because I'm a fucking great lyricist, <laughs> idiots. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, if someone has a criticism, I'm so interested in it, right? Uh, Either way... Fucking, yeah, oh, of course, of course. Like, oh, yeah. that, to me, is just what art is about. Yeah. is about communication, between artists, and that requires criticism well, and analysis. Right, right. Well, yeah, you but have to actually we, criticize, yeah. Before we get cr sidetracked there, here's where they even out, is that I cannot sing the chorus of Broken Record to you. I can sing the chorus of Do What I Want to You. Your days are done. You've something and hoopada. Right, I wouldn't... Da, 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 oh, hoopada. Hoopada, I remember. Yeah, but the... <laughs> The one word you can't I remember. See, I see remember the saying? melody, though. I like the melody for Broken Record. I get that it's like we were saying before. It's 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 white girl. It's white bread. It's vanilla. They're both songs for white girls. Well, Kaylee is speaking. a white girl. Right. But 
my point Finally is Finally decided to just do but what But the thing I about want. that is, dude, I've walked around town but You were saying earlier... Singing that song. You were, earlier, you were saying... Life's you hate short. self-affirming. I do. I That's fuck, the most self-affirming look, so song. So on an artistic level, I've ever heard. Do I not really love the lyrics? No. But in terms of, <laughs> are, are they catchy? Do I remember Your criticism them? Criticism about broken record was about the lyrics for "Do What I Want." You don't remember the lyrics. You remember live performances that were badass. No, 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 and no. the melody. No, that's not true. I, yeah, it is. My point is, is that they flow better. That's for sure. Finally decided to just do what I want. I like that. I do. I like no, that. Just yeah. yeah, just the the chorus itself. I can sing to you. I can't sing the chorus. I still can't sing. The, I can. There's a hoo part or something. Also, Kaylee's Kaylee's vocal delivery is sexy on "Do What I Want." It's yes. just it's 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 got the sultry. It is kind of just. Yeah, she actually delivers the, a very good mm, performance. I think. Which she should have only done great. once and not twice, but still, that's you know. I mean, whatever. Either way, <laughs> I, I, I don't agree I or disagree, know to be honest. better than all of you. <laughs> I, but seriously, it's just like, my opinion. The fact yeah. that I can't sing the chorus of Broken Record is... I just sang it. Even if there's maybe less... Right, you can, but you are, you are a freak and you can remember almost anything. Yeah. Uh, melodically. So? Right? I am not. I remembered that. I'm an I'm an average Joe who can walk around town yeah, going but, finally decided. No, to you've just heard do you've what heard that I one live though. I, we haven't seen I've Mechanical seen Mechanical Roots. Mechanical Roots so they, many times. That's a live. new song. They haven't played that as much live. I don't even know if the I've only heard them play it live. Lyric Maybe I remember once. from it is I've got so it's much. Just so, to it's just lose such a good thing that you're in this path that I choose. That's the only part I remember yeah. lyrically. Yeah, it's just vanilla blah. Right. But so at least I remember the vanilla bluff. I'm just saying, you've. The, it's a good thing you're not a scientist. You've seen this song performed live, <laughs> and heard it so many times, and you've heard mechanical record, and, mechanical <laughs> record broken, fuck, like once, I, and you're like, I, I think I've heard I it more than remember. once, dude. Before we listened to it, before we started shooting this podcast, he was like. I've never heard that song. I got to hear it. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's I'm saying I don't that's remember verbatim. it. No, you said I've never heard it. I haven't heard it yet. I can't remember hearing it live. No, but yeah, right, I, because but you've I maybe know seen I have, it dude. because you've maybe heard it once. I've only heard okay, it once. Maybe we'll, we'll find out. This is not science. <laughs> this is not Nam Walter. There are rules. <laughs> well, now I'm confused. I thought science had rules. Well, this is not Nam. There are rules. That's right. What I'm okay. Saying. Cool. Either way, over the line. I was thinking okay, a marriage so, is like which one would I rather so, which 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 song do I think so would the, produce the most stable children? So the correct for sure broken so the record, but I remember the lyrics of do, so the, do what I want much more. The correct assessment is marry, do what I want, fuck broken record, and kill a Long Beach vacation. That's the correct assessment. Based on your No, based terms. on facts and science. <laughs> and God. I'm sticking <laughs> all with, of those. I'm sticking with things. marry broken record, have an affair with do what I want for thirty no, 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 years. You have straight. to marry. You have to marry. No, I've married Broken Record, and now I'm just fucking. Do it doesn't say it doesn't say only fuck once. It just says which one would you rather fuck and throw to the curb? No, it's which. No, 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 no. You got to do this. This is for life. You have three options. You're overthinking this. I already said it. Yeah, but you got it wrong. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Well, let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, in the comments below. Subscribe Whoa. and shit, bro. No one cares. Okay, let's move on. Moving on. Music. Let's talk about well, let's why do we're let's fucking do doing this. Let's do that. Yeah, it would be a natural segue. I was gonna say we should talk about virtual performances first because it's no, nah, do that later. Like a shorter discussion. No, no, no. Because here's the thing: this I one's think more some interesting. Some people may be wondering, "Hey, what do you guys think about Mary? Fuck, kill, fuck, Mary." I don't. Th I think that they songs. think it's great because it's good <laughs> fucking content. Links will be in this in the description. Yo, click on them. List support local art. That's what we make. This is, podcasting is art. Yeah, since we can't play our music for you anymore. Now that we've... we fucked, let's have our, our annual cigarette of the show. Ah, yes. That sounds delicious. So what are you guys up to? Well, what no. are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the thing is this. Yeah. We do have another I, I do think that people we got it. wonder sometimes. Nailed and it. it's not just because we got do this segment. It's also because in real life we walk around saying what we think. And then people are like, yo, Crazy. why do you keep doing that? Crazy, yeah. And it's a fair question, considering it gets us in trouble more than we'd like. Yeah, speaking but, your mind, boy, what a fucking novel concept. That yeah, sucks. But, like... Stupid. It's... What I always say is... is, is I, I think I kind of touched on it earlier. Like, half the fun of art, if you are into art theory or art history at all, is that there's a dialogue. Right? Right. And if you think that... Uh, 
Henry Toulouse Lautrec didn't think that some of Paul Goggin's paintings were shit, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? If you think that like the the Beach Boys, what? fine, the Beach Boys and the Beatles what? had a fucking little like artistic even if, competition. Even if That's I a know simpler. who those people you are, you you just referenced are <laughs> English <laughs> English priest. What kind of way to make a point was that? Who was, was your the audience? First, they were the first people who came. You're to talking to the 50 people who come to the West Side Revival shows, and you're like, they Let don't me give know you a highbrow historical art French reference. Fucking impressionism. I can't help them. Okay, well, but his point stands. I mean, we like criticism doing this is an kind essential of thing part because, of art. Yes, criticism. If well, art is in some part about the dialogue between artist and audience. It's also about talking about it. I mean. It, have you seen to the movie a, Whiplash? No. To a certain degree, you have to rely on if no one talks about your art. Like if like one thing that kind of pisses me off about the local music scene is this cult of positivity bullshit where everyone's like, oh, it's great. It's really yeah. good. And it's like, dude, no, it's not that good. That's, You're, by that's the way, mean. I can separate. Yeah, I can separate. Like we can be friends. And I can still tell you, hey, man, that sucks. Actually, that's why I have the friends I have who right. I can trust. And that's why we have the enemies we have. By the way, like, <laughs> like aside from our band, I'll bring you a song idea or a mix mm -hmm. or something like that, and I'll be like, hey, Josh, what do you think of this? And if there's a problem, you'll be like, nah, I don't like that. It's like, okay, but I need to I'll be able to... I'll actually throw a fit about it if it's one of our songs. I'll well, be like, this fucking but, sucks. But that's outside of, you know... But, but I think a lot of people are unwilling a, to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they don't trust their theory of art well enough because they never had to practice it, you know? And... They didn't do enough acid. Well, it's just... <laughs> it's Isn't there something interesting to be discussed about much. art? Isn't art sort of the facilitator of converse, the catalyst of conversations? Art is how you explain to future generations what it felt like to live in your space and time. Yeah, or it's how you talk to people now and explain and and maybe help them explain to themselves what it feels like to be alive now. I mean, I, whenever art nails, you know, good music, whenever it nails it and you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ, like art, music in particular can just, I mean, yeah, all art can do it, but music can kind of fucking save your life in a sense where you're just, you've yeah. never been in a position of horrible despair. Yes. And then you hear some music and you're like, I can't even put my finger on what this feels like I right now because I didn't it's want making, to kill myself. It's making me feel all of the things that I've. It's just so right, and it's and it's an it's an unsayable. It's it, it's impossible to articulate that feeling. That's why we have music. Josh Homme, I think, said on Rogan, like, "Yeah, music is just the things that words can't say," or something like yes. that. And it's like, nice, yeah, that's that's true. So anyway, this is why it's important for criticism to exist, and I love that we're in sort of a scene. The scene in Los Angeles is just, it's, aren't they so good? Here, let me share my friend's song with you, but your friend's song fucking sucks. Right, right, Like, right. there's the joke about, oh, my God. How many times have we had people come to our shows who we've invited and had them be like, whew, it's a relief that you guys are good. I'm not talking us up or anything. We just are good. Um, <laughs> but... You know when you shouldn't when, be in a band if you don't think you're good, right? When people, when people after will be like, "Oh my god, I was so afraid that it was going to be like, oh, so and so from the office invited us to a show, and they sucked, and right. we had no, to go I know suffer through it." Yeah. yeah, this is why criticism is good because if you get criticized, in a sense, if you get rationally bullied enough, it's not you will bullied. improve your product. It's not bullying. That's why I call it rational bullying. No, it's it's dude, it's because people think it's bullying. There's a difference between bullying and social correction. Yeah, seriously, absolutely, and that's and why I said the reason bullying. why bullying is basically social correction, the impulse for social correction taken to a negative extreme, right? But like everyone has that impulse where they have opinions, yeah, and society kind of usually shares their opinions, and right. this is how we decide what is considered acceptable and what isn't, right? And that's especially, and I would actually say almost other than maybe politics, that's the most important in art. Because yeah. art, if you want to make great art, yeah. you need people to say to you what you're doing wrong. Well, again, no, almost nobody, this, not even fucking Mozart, this, just shit out great art right, right away. People were saying uh, to Mozart, yo, I didn't like that shit. I don't here's know. what I liked, here's what I didn't like. Mozart might be the exception to that rule. Okay, fine. But even, for instance, the Beatles, right? Segwaying into that article we were reading earlier. Uh, uh, well, well, yeah. Let's, the Beatles fucking... 
were not considered legit as musicians by the music community because criticism actually used to require, you know, theoretical knowledge. Right. Until the leading arts critic on the BBC or whatever it was penned, did a piece basically saying, here's why the Beatles are actually like kind of surprisingly genius. And he explained from a th- musically, uh, a theoretical perspective, from a perspective of music yeah. theory, why what the Beatles were doing was like genuinely just intrinsic genius. Right. And all of a sudden, all the stuff shirts in England were like, oh, well, I dare say the Beatles right. are quite good. Yes. Right, 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 right. And frankly, it, it's a good thing that people had the in, uh, intellectual faculties to be able to process criticism based on the theory of music. Right. Because otherwise, rock and roll would not be accepted as art. It would still be seen like trap music is seen. Yeah, I and mean, he, and by I the was, way, here's why trap music lack, hasn't been accepted. The, the lack you know? of, the lack of good music that's out there on a mainstream scale right now has a lot to do with ignorance. The fact that, yeah, well, ignorance and also critics apparently have decided, uh, fuck, actually talking about music. I mean, and it, it it bleeds down to the local level too, right? I mean, we've talked about this before. We talk about it all the time. You see crap on the local scene because it's not about and on the and, and on the major stages too because it's not about who's good because right. no one is reinforcing what's good or who's good. It's about how seen are you, how woke are you. It's it's about all these things. It's not just about you know the usual woke shit we talk about. But honestly, it's, it's only it's, a very recent thing that that was compounded with. Positivity for everything. I mean, nah, optimism has been generation. around. Optimism has been around for a long since time. like the early two thousands. Yeah, but the thing is, like, look well, at Buzz I, Osborne, I think that's why Steve gonna... Albini. Why do they have a rep? Because they're willing to say this is what we like, this is what we don't like. Yeah, absolutely. But but I think on the on the mainstream, it's cultural forces have gone in such a way that if you stick your neck out the way we do right now and we're doing right now, right, you're either going to get in trouble or you're going to find some modicum of success in some way or another or because. Both. Yeah, or both, probably, you know. Um, but but the the shitty thing is, it's, it's just like, look, if if we want to talk about what's good and what's not, I mean, there's business decisions to be made, you know. If you're a record executive, I totally understand signing someone because they have this appeal to this crowd. Mm-hmm. It's a cynical decision, but that's why this that's article, we should we should pull up this article in a sec. But that's yes. why that's why you need critics to be there who actually know shit. Right. To just be like, look, I'm all for a business decision. I'm all for pop hooks and shit, but this is just crappy music. Like, it's just, there's so much crappy music out there that's being touted as just like, isn't Beyonce a genius? It's right. like, no, no she is not. not. Isn't she an artist? The fact that you have to put out a PR campaign saying that she's an artist proves she's not an artist. Right. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? <laughs> Fucking. Even the fake critics were like, she's not. An artist is, no, they is that now, what we're all now saying. They are. Yeah. yeah, now yeah. we're saying that. Yeah, uh, everybody's She's a genius, and they all follow these marching orders. I didn't realize shaking your ass to someone else's songwriting <laughs> made you a genius. <laughs> ah, right, right. Holy shit! Right, but, but then these same people will criticize Elvis and say he didn't write his own fucking songs. It's like okay, right. Either way, though, before we get in, I think that hey, look, article I don't, is really I don't, good, so we I don't, should go to it. But I don't necessarily care if you write your own songs or not. I care how the songs come out. Um, and mm-hmm. if they come out like Beyonce's, then I'm not that impressed. It's it's rhythm, a simple melody, and a hook. I mean, that's all that, Motown was. Yeah, but but they least, did it so consistently well. That's what made a genius. I mean, there's a genius there. Right. They they used some genius techniques and stuff like that. But I mean, even that's a lot. Why of, I would say like I lo- I actually a lot like of that Bruno stuff, Mars because he's a competent. A lot fucking of a lot of that stuff isn't my favorite music in the world, though. I mean, I love it, but if I had to pick five bands to live with for the rest of my life and no other bands, no Motown artists would make it onto that list. I agree because they're not the most evocative musicians. It's a they're they're going. It's a it's a it's a what do you call it? It's a sweatshop for music it's not it's a it's a factory it's not Mm -hmm. really a tailor-made mom and pop you know and i'm always gonna like that kind of shit better yes that's okay but even then they were out out even then though they were they were savage about what they the way that they executed their product right and by the way so are the people making pop music are cigarettes not some of the best things it's stupid i fucking love cigarettes man fucking when so i would i and i like to say too this applies to all art and yeah. before we, I, I think we should get to that article, but sure. I, I want to say in terms of 
you as an artist and how you receive criticism. You, the artist. Whoever's listening, yeah. Uh, how you receive criticism and how you understand criticism as, as, as just an entity, like what it is and what its purpose is, right? right? I learned a lot about that from my days in college. I worked on this uh, uh, show that the local PBS station would do, uh -huh. and it was like a student produced show yeah. with like some like oversight from the station and the professors. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a comedy sketch show. What we would do is go into a writer's room and you'd bring scripts if you wrote scripts and you'd read them all. We'd do a table read and then we'd give feedback and then the group would have to decide which ones got made, right? Yeah. There was a head writer and, but, other, but it was still pretty democratic. Mm -hmm. And so what would happen was you'd bring in stuff. There was a guy there who I actually loved named Nash who never wrote a script and literally just showed up because he was kind of mean and would just be like, this is trash. <laughs> and he'd just come up with really, he'd just insult people in a pretty funny way. And I was like, I love this guy. There's an art to that. Yeah, because I was like, this guy doesn't produce anything, but I'm bringing in scripts as a, an 18 year old, right? Who's never really written anything. Yeah. And people are just like, this sucks. It's too long. It's not funny. Good. There's too many characters. I had a, too many uh, words. I had a fucking journalism teacher because I wrote for the newspaper when I was a uh, senior in high school uh, and a junior, I guess. Anyway, I had a journalism teacher who, Miss Cadena, spelled Cadena, but Cadena, because as a white kid in the suburbs of Michigan, I'm privy to definitely knowing that a D is a TH in Spanish for some reason. Anyway, um, she would Wait, rip but why is Barcelona? Barcelona, because it's a C. Barcelona. Barcelona? That's what they call it. Really? Yeah, man. I thought it was Barcelona. Ignorant. Huh. Fucking white man. Man. Um, but yeah, she would she <laughs> would rip my my pieces apart. Right. And yeah. I'm grateful for that because I'm pretty bad at taking criticism just naturally. And I've gotten so much better, honestly, largely because of her. Helped my writing too, a shit ton. Mm -hmm. And then I got good enough that she would behind my back show my pieces to the other class and be like this is really good, right? Like this. <laughs> well, dude, asshole. The thing is, okay, so I brought in Say it scripts. to my face. Okay, so wait, like, we should get on to this music Before criticism. we get to it, I want to finish my point. Has which degenerated was, which into just, lifestyle reporting. I've, I've... It took so long. I know, yeah, but I had to, you have to set the stage for people who don't know who the fuck you are. The stage is set. You're in a writer's room. You're making sketch comedy. Yeah. I would bring in scripts. I'd bring in a script, right? It would get trashed. It wouldn't get made. Yeah. So I started writing three scripts a week. Okay. Soon I was writing like five or six and I would be bring, we'd be reading five or script, six of my scripts. Five of the six would get uh, trashed. People right. would be like, this sucks. One of the six, they'd be like, this is good, but it needs these improvements. And eventually, by my second year on the show, I was literally writing 60% of the scripts that got made. And that's because I embraced the fact that people, that the whole point what? of a writer's room, yeah. the whole point yeah. of giving feedback yeah. is for them to tear you apart so you can build something better. Yeah. And so if you aren't open to criticism and you yeah. aren't open to the idea that maybe your music could be better, yeah. you aren't serious about being an artist. Well, hey, look, it's, you know, I'll be the first to say it's hard to accept criticism about something that you created because I think the best art yeah. is sort of involves Very you personal. bearing your soul, wearing your heart on your sleeve and sort of exposing something about yourself. Um, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> um, and if you, if you, like, look, I know that it's hard to, to, oh, you I, get very, you get very upset when people, when, when, there are some times where Colin and I will criticize. Colin is the drummer for our band. A song you've written in the practice. The Absurd. And you'll, and I mean, and you'll, you're wise enough to own up to it ASAP, basically. Yeah. But there will be sometimes a period where you just, you're just like, motherfuckers. Because, you know, we're, we're tearing apart your baby. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, it, to, me, now, to me now. To me now, it's something different. It's it's. I don't exactly know that I can rationally explain it. And our point is going to go on hold. We were told that this might happen. Uh, who is Ian, this? Ian LeBlanc? I'll have you know, we played. Ian, are you screen recording? What's up, buddy? We uh, we decided. To yeah, finally decided. We finally decided to just do what we want. Life's too short. 
Ian LeBlanc. Hey, so let's uh, go in hey, and have some Drew's fun. There, Drew, the hey, LeBlanc hey. Bros. Hey, what's up, guys? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> hey, let's get a clink, huh? Come on. I'll have you know, Ian, that we played uh, Mary Fuck Kill with uh, Laced in Blue's song, and I decided to marry, do what I want. Yeah. Versus Broken Record by Mechanical Roots and Long Beach Vacation by Karma Vulture. I married, wow. Wow. I married Laced in Blue instead of my own band that I'm in. That's amazing. Also, also happy man. birthday, buddy. Oh, thank you so Genuinely much. surprising. Mm -hmm. Because we did not expect to, uh... You look so pretty. Hey! Hey, are we taking shots? Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. You're a beautiful man. Okay, let's join into that. We're going to get back to our podcast, but happy birthday, buddy. Hey, fuck yeah, man. I love you guys so much. Love you, too. You. Wait, real quick. Ian, Have fun got, with the lockdown. I got I got one question for you. Josh, you're yeah. an idiot. What's that? Have you been shown? Uh, what is the best drug trip you've had this entire quarantine? Oh, the, the best. Hey, you're being, you're being recorded, Ian. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> We're here. She knows me. We're on live. Ladies and gentlemen, what? we're leaving this in because we are idiots. Uh, this is content. This is not content. This is garbage. This is absolute garbage. Hey, Ian, this is going to go on the internet live. Yeah, it's going to go on the internet. That's what I'm trying to tell you, buddy. Okay, cool. We bought some DMT the other night. Nice. Nice. And uh, we got house plays from our, our, our living room. Yeah. Honestly, it's really fucking beautiful. Wow. And, uh, You've incriminated yourself and others. I, like, I, I felt like I was going to speak nice. in my own room. Yeah. Nice. I had, all, I had these beings like, offering me these gifts, but they were all like fractal, like stacked, like stacked fractals on top of each other. <laughs> and I had my eyes closed or my, um, yeah. Or, or like my eyes open, it was the same kind of beings, just like twirling, just showing me different gifts, and all the gifts were just different, like lit up energy orbs, like different colors, and each one had their own little vibe. And um, it, it was kind of just like these. Um, You're not holding like, it close enough for this. It's, it was kind of like gears in a machine that were fuck. like spinning and spinning, and they were all spinning on each other, and they all, they all had different like. Sick. Sick, 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 sick. You should and, see uh, Ben's really face right now. Tight, 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 tight. That is tight as Kaylee fuck. just took some acid, apparently. I'm literally they're like, they're like, they're going like to throw the phone against the wall. But I... I love you, too. We'll talk... Well, when they're done... We'll Get out. Get out. Go. Go. Give me that screen recording. Go. Edit it in, and it'll be top-notch professional shit, man. I mean, to be real, no one's paying attention anymore anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, so back to the art, to what we were talking about. Which yeah. Is music, music hey, criticism as tune into fake news records for all the content that you never needed. Right here. That's what we're going to do. No, I want to talk to another person who's going to call us about uh, their uh, fucking goddamn birthday. That's what I want to do on TV. I want to talk about birthdays and DMT trips, and I want to incriminate all my friends by showing <laughs> their face... With them talking about a drug trip. Hey, man. That's what we do. Oh, no, wait. I'm not retarded. I don't want to do that. <laughs> just doing our job. <laughs> just, just kidding, ladies and gentlemen. I am obviously incriminating myself by doing this podcast in the first place. Anyway. Music criticism is dead. This article. No one is serious about talking about this music. Article, no one's serious about music being good. Shut the fuck up. This article. By Ted Goya. Jazz critic. I don't have anything convenient to throw at you. Actually, I do. Oh, there's liquid. There's liquid in there. Don't do it. <clears throat> All right. So this article is called "Music Criticism Has Degenerated into Lifestyle Reporting." Yeah. By Ted Goya. Goya. He's Dana Goya's brother. The hell's Dana Goya? He's a poet. What's a poet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a singer, but with less swag, <laughs> but with no music. So we won't read the whole thing, but it's definitely a really good article. Um, imagine, for a moment, football commentators who refuse to explain formations and plays, or a TV cooking show that never mentions the ingredients, or an expert on cars who refuses to look under the hood of an automobile. 
These examples may sound implausible, perhaps ridiculous, but something comparable is happening in the field of music journalism. One can read through a stack of music magazines and never find any in-depth discussion of music. True. Technical knowledge of the art form has disappeared from its discourse. In short, music criticism has turned into lifestyle reporting. So sad. Are you imitating so Trump? I think. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure what happened. Uh, all right, so the premise is that music criticism has turned into lifestyle reporting. There's a bunch of weird... Good evidence you know, for it. Stuff. I know, I'm just trying to find a point that's actually... Uh, well, here. It's a sign of the times that celebrity Trump's actual culture, Billboard magazine editorial director Bill Word recently complained in a parting shot before his departure from the periodical. He recalled his frustration after the American Music Awards when he tried to interest media outlets in covering some of the outstanding performances at the event. I bumped into a producer for one of the shows that was contemplating coverage, Word describes, and our conversation basically amounted to it was boring because nothing controversial happened. Word concluded this open letter to his peers in music journalism. Maybe, just maybe, we should focus on their art. So basically the guy from Billboard magazine, the editorial director, was pitching the idea of actually liking music because it's good writing about music as music and the uh whoever he was pitching it to was just like eh, not not so and much. then the next day he was fired well because he put this open letter out to his peers in music journalism that said maybe just maybe we should focus on their art a few days after he wrote these words word was gone from billboard he announced that from that the parent company wanted to move the brand in a more consumer focused oh. direction his replacement, Janice Min, who of the will Hollywood also Reporter, retain responsibility for the Hollywood Reporter. She's a good friend of details, Harvey Weinstein, but talked about creating a true entertainment super brand. I won't try to decipher this corporate jargon, but my hunch is that the industry's leading trade journal will pay even less attention to music and focus more on scandals, spectacles, and lifestyle-oriented yep. stories. When did this article come out? This is like 2013, dude. 2017. Really? Yeah. No way. Yep. Um. That's, that can't be true. It must have been reposted because I read this in college. Um, because there was a... Published 2014, yeah. updated 2017. Okay, yeah. um, okay, so there's actually some cool shit in here. It's been true for a while, though. Like, dude, I used to yeah, get absolutely. Spin Magazine. Yeah. I used to read Stereo Gum. Yeah. And the, not only did the music recommendations get worse, it just got more and more about what people are wearing, Yeah. who they're dating... I saw it in real time. That was a part of why that, when that article first came out, it resonated with me was because I was just like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like, <laughs> this is funny. When Harry Connick Jr. recently used the word pentatonic on American Idol, his fellow judge, Jennifer Lopez, turned it into a joke. And indeed, what could be more humorous than a musician of Connick's stature trying to talk about musical scales on a reality TV show? Yet football announcers not only talk about stunts or the triple option, but are expected to explain these technical aspects of the game to the unenlightened. The hosts on business cable channels refer to P.E. ratios and swap spreads, and no one laughs at them. So why can't a judge in a TV singing contest employ some basic music terminology? The pentatonic scale is a simple concept, just five notes we all learned as children. Yet even that tiny dose of musical knowledge is apparently too much for modern-day media. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Like, and he says it wasn't like this, and, you know. I mean, I, I completely agree with that. Like, you know, the idea that, yeah, why, you know, Honestly, part of the reason I don't watch a bunch of football is because I've never watched a bunch of football, and so I'm sort of behind. It's like starting to play video games at like the Call of Duty level right now, where I'm just like, "Fuck, I have no idea what the vocab." Which I can play Pac-Man, sort of. <laughs> I could also sort of play Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah. like if, I'm, if I have enough blow, yeah, I'll be yeah. really good at Pac-Man. We'll be great at Pac-Man. <laughs> um, but yeah, you 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 kind of just have to know certain terms, like. It's not a bad thing. It wouldn't be a bad thing for music critics to be like the pentatonic scale, which, by the way, if you're unfamiliar, is five notes everyone learns. Or just, do, you know, re, mi, fa, so. Just link, just put yeah. a link. Yeah, yeah. Like, in and, and so many fucking articles, you just have links. Right. All, all you want, by the way, if you talk to people who are digital media editors, yeah. is as many different pages and articles as possible. That's why so many articles are slideshows, because you're yeah. going to a different page each time. It gets them more clicks. You get right. 10 clicks from one article. Yeah. Well... Have just a page on your music website that says, hey, here's what the pentatonic scale is for dummies. Yeah, this is But cool. no one's going to even click that because they don't care. Yeah. This says, if you can remember a time when music... By the way, I'm skipping all over this article. If you want The link it, will be in the description. Yeah, sure. we'll put the link there. Um, 
Ted Goya? Ted Goya? Yeah. Goya. Goya. Yeah. It's like G I O I A. Yeah. Anyway, it says few can remember a time when or music Spanish. wasn't a tool of self definition, but until the second half of the 20th century, this was only a small part of a song's appeal. For most living in the world, circa 1920, music was embedded into their life, not chosen as a lifestyle accessory. This is literally what we were talking about but, last, last podcast. But gradually, over the next several decades, music's value as a pathway, 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 a pathway, a pathway of personal definition came to the forefront of our culture. Sometimes the shift was barely perceptible, but in retrospect, we can gauge its profound impact. For example, people so in rural America like didn't rock. choose country music <laughs> during the early decades of the 20th century, but were literally born into its ethos. Yet by the 70s, country music had evolved into a lifestyle choice, hmm. a posture adopted by millions who never roped a steer or herded cattle, but still wanted to affiliate themselves with the values espoused by the songs. By the time we arrived at the age of disco and punk rock, the music consciously built its appeal on lifestyle considerations. Here's where I don't necessarily... Like, yeah, that's true. I agree but with I don't, all of that. But I don't mind that necessarily i guess he's just tracking the evolution but well look it's like there, not there's, in the that. 70s the same period he's talking about is when country music started talking about truckers and Jesus, glorifying I was, I was all of a sudden like why the fuck am i so high and then i realized Dude, we... those things just kick in those edibles just kick in like in five i don't know they just turn on yeah right it's yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> but like uh what are we what are we eating what are these no they're over there they're called pro tabs sativa pro tabs they're for pros. Yeah. <laughs> but like who like to eat tabs? In the 70s is when the is when like you got like the trucker wave of country where, uh-huh. where the trucker's the new cowboy. Right, right. And I think that, that actually him using country as an example is a great example because it is one of the first examples of music being used as a reaction to the culture war that was in my opinion perceived from the 60s, right? Like in my, I think that you know, there's obviously a revolutionary spirit to rock and roll, but at the same time, it's just that's the music of the people at the time. Well, see, that's that's kind of what I don't like. Like what I look overall, I get that music should be music, a, but as we were saying before, part of what's fun about art is the communication between the creator and the audience, uh-huh. and the critic is a large part of that, and well, so he's like the interpreter. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm necessarily like I'm not so anti. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, socially aware music. Is this guy we make is? socially aware music? Right, exactly. I mean, rock and roll is sort of a rebellion. I don't think he's, to the he's saying that music shouldn't. Well, be here, conscious. here's I'll I'll read this. No, I don't think he's saying that either. Again, I think he's just tracking it. But I think reading into what he's saying, maybe reading between the lines a little bit, is. He seems to just be like, man. I mean, he is a jazz guy. Jazz is the best. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. I would just bet that this guy was a jazz guy without knowing that. Right, you know? yeah. And I didn't know that before I said that. I'll have you know. So he says, record label execs and critics never actually announced that they had given up on music as music, but their actions <laughs> made clear how little faith they retain in its redemptive power, how much they crave the glamour of other fields. They acted as if music were a subset of the fashion or cinema or advertising industries. Songs became vehicles, platforms for something larger than just notes or words. Or, dare I suggest, something smaller. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Our everyday language also reflects this shift. During the entire year 1967, the Chicago Tribune only employed the word lifestyle seven times, but five years later, the term showed up in the same newspaper more than 3,000 times. Fast forward to the present day. Many newspapers have full-time lifestyle editors. We know a guy who used to be... That Greg Gilman, right? Well, he's he? who I was talking about, but he's he's a, he's for the internet, not for a newspaper. Well, a publication. Yeah. And there goes GoPro number one. Goodbye. Must be the battery. So you got another one? Yeah, I do. All right. While he does that, I'm going to read you more of this, dear listener, dear reader. If you have not seen Dear Reader Harry I'm Potter. I know that this, this article, that this podcast is brought to him by Itchy Bum. This article is brought. Oh, this. Cool. And now we are just running around in the dark here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good time as any to be alive. It's sort of like the quarantine. All is darkness. It's all bleak. We are in the dark, and it's fun. It's really fun. I'm just going to keep going on with this article because it's interesting. No, no, no. I'm just going to keep going. No, 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 no. It's cool. I'm going to keep going. All right. Our everyday language also reflects this shift. During the entire year 1967, 
The Chicago Tribune only employed the word lifestyle seven times, but five years later, the term showed up in the same newspaper more than 3,000 times. Fast forward to the present day. Many newspapers have full-time lifestyle editors. The shift has impact on every, on coverage. The shift has impact on coverage of every aspect of modern society, is what it should say, from sports to the weather. The lead-in for traffic is a cheery, now a look at your morning commute. Business news is introduced with a glib, here's a look at your money. Hey, Mr. Announcer, you better look fast. But the arts have suffered the most from this mind-numbing approach. Music in particular gets treated as one more lifestyle accessory, no different from a stylish smartphone or pair of running shoes. Hard-nosed criticism is squeezed out by soft stories, gossip, and fluff. For better or worse, music journalism is retreated into a permanent TMZ zone where paparazzi and prattlers, not critics, set the tone. That's what Greg worked for, right? Are we back? We're back on both, man. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. This is brought to you by Itchy Bum Cream. Yeah, because they didn't hear that before. We never stopped it. Are we cutting parts out? Yeah, probably. No, that was good. Seamless content. Anyway. (laughs) Hey. We're talking about music criticism and how it's dead. And just like our cameras. Um, Even statements that appear at first glance. he, He gets into some dumb bullshit in this article, yeah. Yet we need smart musical criticism more than ever nowadays. In my many years as music scribe, I've never encountered such a huge gap between the skilled and the unskilled, the talented and the wannabes. Listening to new releases, I'm reminded of how an Australian friend once described the United States to me. You Americans represent the best of the best and the worst of the worst, all hopelessly mixed together, which given current uh, circumstances, I would 100% agree with that. Yeah. The same is true of the output of the music industry in the present day. I hear artists who can sing like birds, others who would need to retire if autotune disappeared. I encourage songwriters who have mastered all the nuances of harmony, others who, you couldn't blow that the other way? You had to blow that right at me? I encourage songwriters who have mastered all the nuances of harmony, others who wouldn't modulate keys if you handed them the chords on a silver flash drive. I'm dazzled by performers who possess a deep grasp of rhythm. Others apparently haven't yet figured out the simplest syncopations. Yeah. I agree with all that. I also, you know, this guy is obviously such a technical music guy that it's just kind of like, yeah, okay. I mean, here's the other thing, dude. You, know, you really like, think that the... I like cool music, and I don't give a shit if people Miles who Davis aren't... didn't go to music school. Also, he was an asshole and a heroin addict till he died, which is pretty impressive. But my point is, like, these people just figured out because they played music, and they were really fucking good at it. Right, right. Well... Well, I think his central thesis still stands in my book. I mean, I mean, I agree. I'm just saying he is absolutely approaching it from an elitist perspective. Yeah, but I also yeah. I, I love the Richard Dawkins point uh, that he I, I forget where he made it exactly. It was in some some speech where he's like, I'm kind of tired of running away from being called an elitist. If you want a doctor, don't you want the best doctor? I don't want to talk into that mic. <laughs> I like that your head immediately went like. Shit. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, what's wrong yeah. with what's what, exactly what is wrong with it with conceding the obvious fact that will not change regardless of what your opinion is that there are Wait, those who are, are you, elite? Are you saying that facts don't care about your feelings? Are you a Shapiro fan? <laughs> Doesn't that make you a Nazi or something? <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think any rational person would disagree with that. No, you can't disagree with that. It's it's one of those, it's like saying the sun, nope, the sun rises in the south. It's like, no, it, there, no, it does not. You can say that all you, you want. You yeah, can I mean, definitely say that. Like, You yeah. have a right to say that. All right. So Similarly, you have a right to say Beyonce is an artist. Okay, so he says, certainly non-musical factors also deserve attention from critics. We have all encountered artists with very little technical skill who still succeed because they compensate with an excess of imagination and creative vision. That's so he's kind of talking was, about Jack White. That's what I was getting at. Not, I mean, he's technically really good. Yeah, I mean, he's just technically unique. Yeah, but dude, he's no, he's actually really. He can't good at use guitar. one of his four fingers. Yeah, right? but he's really good with his three. Exactly. That's my point, though. He's that's, like, no, that's no, 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 Who but, he's talking about? No, he's talking about like Tony Iommi. He's talking about people who are worse than them. They're they're technically good. I mean. They're not technically super sophisticated, but they understand which notes to hit. My dad, which is like honestly, a, dude, one of the hardest things for musicians to do is like just learn the fretboard. You know, that's true. Maybe you stay in a safe space, but whatever. Performance is a different thing. So he well, says, my, "My dad, who's, who's and, someone who's a very big music theory person, he's where I got most of my music theory knowledge he says, from. He, he hates says, Black Sabbath and because who knows? they're not technically interesting to him as a music theory person. 
whatever. So I think and that they're knows? the sort of people he's talking about. I don't, but whatever. Probably, whatever, who cares? Um, and who knows, maybe waving a foam finger or dressing like a robot warrants a paragraph or two, even if it's little <laughs> more than a gimmick. But let's not kid ourselves. These can't serve as the foundation for a healthy musical culture. Musical knowledge empowers artistic expression. I agree with that. Critics yeah. who are unwilling or perhaps incapable of assessing such matters may still have some insights to offer, but they will struggle to fulfill the most basic responsibility of the music critic, which is to pay close attention to the sounds. Yet there's an even larger issue at stake here. The biggest problem with lifestyle-driven music criticism is that it poisons our oral culture. Oral as in A-U-R-A-L. Discerning consumers uh, who care about okay. music and have good ears should be the bedrock of the music business, but many of them have given up on new artists because they can't find reliable critics to guide them. True. Record labels, for their part, need frank, knowledgeable feedback from critics, which is why we need to hear from you, because we're a real record label. <laughs> both to keep them honest and hold them accountable. But such input is in short supply and veering towards extinction. Above all, artists deserve a milieu in which musical talent is celebrated and given some acknowledgement in the media. In other words, criticism is a tiny part of the ecology of the music business, but an essential part. Without smart, independent yeah. critics who know their stuff, everything collapses into hype, public relations, and the almighty dollar. Absolutely. We've already seen where that leads us. Take a look at the trend line of recording sales if you have any doubts. If it's not too late, to, it's not too late to fix, fix the mess but that won't happen until critics stop acting like gossip columnists and start taking the music seriously again. I mean, okay, so that's the thing. I think that what we're seeing right now with rock and roll... Good article. Very good article. And with what... Go the, look it up. The link is in the description. The, like, all the streaming services... Jesus Christ. They want to tell you what to listen to, right? But at the same time, they're more interested... In just the reality of what you're listening to. Well, they're right? they're the algorithms are following trends and right, recommending things. Yeah, and and that, that that's actually what I was gonna, is second. To that's what I was going to say is sadder than you know streaming platforms recommending things based on algorithmic trends are bands who are like, oh, we should do we should act this way or play this kind of music because that's where the trend is. It's like, dude, you see this, we know bands who do this, like tons of bands, and you can see bands do it on bigger scales too. Like, that's no way to make anything good. Well, and so what you have right now, for instance, okay, so I was talking to, I literally when I pitched the idea of being in a band to you, before we were ever in a band, before I could play an instrument, Literally, one of the things I said to you was what I, is that. Are you I taking thought, credit for forming this band? No. Oh. At all. Not at all. I, the band only Wait, formed this, because you were writing well, killer songs. Well, this band is the absurd, by the way. <laughs> A very American band. I in, suppose, yes. In which we act like this. Yeah, right. But, like, this dude was writing good music, uh -huh. and I wanted to be a part of it. So, I mean, there's no credit, obviously, would go to you primarily. I was just kidding. Right, I know. Okay, I'm just... Either way, so when I called you and was like, yo, man, we got to do a rock band, right? A big... Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Have a, some a rye, big, my good man. <laughs> Cheers, guys. A big part of that... If you're still here, you... You deserve it. Have issues, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you deserve it. Quarantine sucks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Must be lonely. <laughs> At least Fucking, we're quarantined together. Yay. yay. Fucking... But, like, uh... Literally, a big part of my thinking was this is around 2013 that I'm talking. I was like, dude, 2020 is going to be a crazy year because I think America will be in a pretty authoritarian place by then, and rock and roll has a place as well, they're rebellion. Just, they're just shutting down the entire economy and having cops give tickets to people for taking walks. But I doubt it's authoritarian. Going, I'm not even trying to go there. My point is, is that I thought <laughs> that 2020 was going to be a year because of that reason for rock and roll to have some... A purpose, right? Uh -huh. And if you then go, just go read any of the fluff pieces about Ellie Hagendorf and Spotify, right? Right, right. Hell, literally, I was I was talking to uh, the head of a, a indie record label, who's an awesome dude. How much higher can we get? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking madness. I, I was at. I was at. Uh, the Sloth Thrust release show. Yeah. I'm talking to the head of their label. Uh -huh. And he's like, and I was telling them this. Who's their he, label? Danger Bird. Yeah. And uh, who has not 
signed us yet, so we obviously do not endorse them. I'm guessing they should sign us. <laughs> Three I'm white guys who are told, extremely masculine. I'm not even kidding. I'm guessing that, that they've been told that we are uh, too volatile. Persona non grata. Yeah, exactly. Persona non grata. Because I know some of the bands that they, I don't think that they signed, but that they were interesting in, interested in don't like us, but I know some of the bands they have do like us, so it's, anyway. Fucking. Maybe we just regard, aren't that good. Yeah, we could suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even trying to get, my point was that <laughs> the dude know, knows what he's talking about. He's been around forever. Yeah. I trust him yeah. when he talks about this sort of stuff. At least that I trust that he knows what the fuck is going on, right? What and the fuck is going on? I think on? he, frankly, has done a good job, actually, I'm with that label. So They've high. been putting out a bunch of music over the quarantine. Yeah. Like, just, like, literally, I get, like, an email every other day. Okay. For new Danger Bird song, and, like, some of the bands I don't necessarily, good. yeah, I don't necessarily know that I like releasing all this music in quarantine. I, I guess it's good to release songs and stuff. They're doing individual songs. I'm a little hesitant to do it, though. I mean, we did, we did one just because we uh, got to take over the hi-hat story, right? Yeah, that was fun. Here's the, the hi-hat LA on Instagram. It, who the fuck's watching us who doesn't know us? You know the hi-hat. It's in <laughs> Highland Park. Um, and it, awesome venue. We had a show scheduled there uh, to s- commemorate a single release. And that's the thing. I don't like it when people release music on a local level without some kind of release or whatever. I mean, even, this is a national I- label. Yeah, yeah. This is like no, New it, West Records releasing something. Or, you know what I mean? Uh, they aren't as big as New West. I mean, they did Silver Sun pickups, I guess. They're actually probably bigger than New West in terms of public perception. As a name, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. Hey, John Fratelli was on Danger Bird for a sec. See, I think now would be a good time to release, like, B-list stuff. B-roll, you know? They're just releasing singles from I just, I'm, bands, I'm just saying, I, I, get, I get tired of... You're getting the, the product out there oh, so when they can the, tour again, they're ready. Right. It's just like, ah, it's the lockdown. Let's play a fucking virtual show for you guys it's like i'd never tune into that ever i would i would personally i would rather see this kind of content but well first obviously that's why i'm doing it real quick point was they said to me that the industry's already decide yes well but he he was like yo that's i think it was ali he was like that's the head of spotify we're we looking there. for her? and he was like yo literally they just told me I follow 2019 is the she's year, hot. right? Well, she's 2019, I wouldn't say it was the year that Rock took over, but I, I went and read some fluff pieces about Allie Hagendorf, and she said the same thing. And it's very clear right. that they were trying to, to make Rock a thing uh, again. Uh, I think that's because what they're doing is they're following the trends of, of what older music people are listening to, right? This is why Greta Van Fleet's getting such play. Yeah, I was going to say, and, Rock is definitely seeping back into the veins of uh, society. Right. Yeah. So I think... It's a good thing that they follow trends first. It's a bad thing that there are so few gatekeepers, and it's a bad thing that criticism is literally just a PR wing of the labels at this point. Yeah, well, I think, though, like I but was saying... But if you can correct those two things, I think that can really not only help the quality of music, but I think those two things are start will potentially be corrected yeah, it, because as they follow the trends, well, they're but, realizing that people are actually thirsting for good music. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I also to put, that's, finish that before we move no, on. No, to no, the, no. I, I, don't I liked what you were saying about the virtual performances and all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can talk about that. Um, but, but I think, yeah, that's why. Like I was saying before we started filming, it's like, well, that's why there's a window opening for people who are willing to get in a little bit of trouble because at this point, I think everyone is fucking completely fed up with. <laughs> The bullshit that's being chugged out. Seriously, I mean, I, I, I think even dude, you heard the new Dua dude, even, Lipa song. Dude, he, he, I think okay. So let me let me make a political point. Sort of not. I'm going to use a political allegory. God damn it! Joe Rogan, like two days ago, said he would vote for Trump over Biden. Right? Wow, we're just yeah. Okay, what? I'm not making a political point. It's a political <laughs> allegory. I'm saying that there's a correspondence in uh, where basically even people like him, dude, that was a good one, who are pretty far to the Come left. On are like, okay, I'm fucking sick and tired of the choices that you're giving me, so I'm going to go to the other side. I think that's happening in music, too, where people who are willing to be like, people who for maybe like a year or two, you know, a couple years ago, were like, no, Beyonce really is an artist, are now coming around to just being like, shit, another Beyonce song? Like, 
it's like right because they're it was, not coming around to that yet. Because it was never good. But they I, might be I, no, coming I think, around to Cardi I think, B. No, I think that yeah. I think that's happening. Like, I think that's I think it's being roped back into where actual good music can be. There's 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 a window for it. There's an outlet, and I think there's an outlet in criticism as well, which is why we can do something like this, you know, and maybe have a shot at being listened to or whatever, because it's just like, yeah, everything else is fucking boring. Don't you see what a boring world you've created for yourselves with all of this, <laughs> all of yeah. this judgment, you know, about things that are boring. completely irrelevant. It's boring, dude. I'm just bored. It's fucking boring. Most of the time by things that come out. Yeah. And like, not just music. Movies. I don't want to be bored. I've, you know, of course our personalities are such that we're always going to be pushing the line and bored with what other people aren't bored with. But when you can see an entire population getting bored on a mass scale. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Well, dude, cause just even look at like what a, to use movies as an example, it's just fucking look at men boring. in black. Dude, cage versus... the elephant is considered like a great rock band now who, by the way, I think is a great they're band. A good band. They're great. They write great songs. I don't know if I'd say great. I'd say good. They're I think they're a good great. band. I think, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, he's a great songwriter. They're like, if someone puts him on, I'm not going to be like, yo, can you change that? No, he's a, sometimes I will. Cause I'm like, I don't want to hear this guy's voice or this song for the fucking millionth time, but he's a great songwriter. They're a good band, I guess, yeah. Because they've never done anything as a band where I'm like, holy shit. They've never blown my mind, no, ever. absolutely not. But he does consistently chug out some really fucking good songs. That, right. That songwriter dude. I don't know what his name is. I don't know his name either, but, I mean, even then, though, like, for instance, there are people like, like I mentioned John Fratelli. Yeah. He's someone who has kind of blown my mind, not only because he, some of his B-sides are just, like, ridiculously so good, good. He's so good. But, like, every song he makes is is good. And that mm. kind of blows my mind. Whereas yeah. with with Cage the Elephant, I'm like, oh shit, a good band that can make like four good songs an album. Thank God those still exist. I wish there were about seventy more of them. Right, 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 you know? right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Then the write... radio would be awesome. Well, it's not like every band right. in the '90s was the shit, dude. Right, that's the like, thing. Toadies that's had thing. one hit. Yeah, exactly. But that hit was really good, and yeah. they've got like three or four other songs worth listening to. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, none of their albums are memorable. I listened to the album with that song uh, "Possum Kingdom" on it, and I was just kind of like supremely underwhelmed. They have one called. There's I, actually like five good songs on there. There are. Yeah, like, the there, first five songs are. There all, are. Yeah, but and it's then you just. Get bored. It's just that was the model back then. I don't know what the hell the model is now, but it's like. It is just funny that. You know, it's it's just not the case that like there's a bunch of bands who are offering even one good song. Like Cage the <laughs> Elephant is considered a hero because the bar Dude, is so low that you can trip over it when you get oh, out of fucking bed in the morning. Right. Which is but a they're like quote one attributable the, to my uncle and Godfather. Them and uh Kings of Leon. Kings of Leon are fucking great. Oh, like I'll the stand last by that. Couple and, of their and albums I guess Arctic suck. Monkeys are like the last. Arctic Monkeys are really good. Uh, Queens of the Stone like Age. FM rock band standing. Because even Queens, dude, like they dropped off the map for long enough that, that like, I guess kids like them. Because I know some Queens of our of fans Stone who are Age like 19, I think 20, bands, they bands, really like Queens. Somehow bands like Queens of the Stone Age, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Radiohead, and all the rest, they just got on an internet wave where they were just like, yeah, we're going to that quickly. I think I think Josh right. Homme is also they got enough of a hit that they could coast. He did Caius and, and Queens of the Stone Age. I think he's just got and yeah, he's just made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's well, he's the king. Yeah, kind of right? exactly. Like, yeah, Jack White, same thing. My point is yeah. like Arctic Monkeys is something you can reliably expect a high school girl to like, right? Kings of Leon is something you can reliably expect, and so and so is Cage the Elephant. I don't and yeah. What you want? Oh, I, I think what they're point, trying to guess, do yeah. with Greta Van Fleet, yeah, is they're trying to get those bands back, right? Right. But the thing is, I think what you need, the thing that I would agree is I would say that the the consistent factor among those bands, among, let's say, Jack White, because Jack White's huge still. Right. Josh Homme. Each of these bands actually has their own sound. And genre wise isn't as easy to, to define as you think. I was just having a conversation with someone about, like, is Jack White punk? Right. And I was saying, yep. And they were saying, nope, he's blues. And I was like, oh, really? Did you know that the way Jack White got his connections was he was in a band called The Go that was on Sub Pop, a punk label, in the 90s? Oh, that's a grunge label. Right. But, like, that album uh, is, like, garage. Dude, like, I mean, it's Jack like White is punk. If the Stooges are punk, Jack White is punk. 
I, I mean, Jack White's got a lot of punk going on. That's but he's so obviously funda- punk. Fundamentally, he's blues. He's both. Yeah, but fundam- if you had to choose one, it'd be blues. Right, but so what makes him unique? It's, th- it's all it's that, these it's different that you factors. Can't, you can't categorize him that like Exactly. That. Yeah. Same with, like, the Arctic Monkeys. They didn't become a great band until they saw until they got arctic. down with the queens of stone age wave and they did the more stonery stuff than arctic. the lounge stuff are arctic monkeys a great band yeah i think they'll be remembered as a great band i don't know their first album is considered by many to be like the best album of that post-punk revival garage rock era right that sucks I mean, I'm just saying that it is. Their second album. I mean, I'm just, good. I'm just saying. Their third album is pretty good. You know what? I, I'd say listen to the hives. AM is a great album. The hives are better. Uh, you think the hives are better than the Arctic Monkeys? I love I, the look, hives. Look, look. I'm saying with songwriting, I'd say the vines are better. The vines is who I was thinking of. It um, actually maybe the hives too. Um, the hives rule, but like they're very one dimensional. So are the Arctic Monkeys. No, the, every album they do is a little different. Yeah, but but here's here's how I look at it. I'm like, okay, that dude is another example of like Cage the Elephant. They're underwhelming dude, for me. Hold live. on, hold on. They're a band like Cage the Elephant, where the songwriter is amazing. I don't, I, Alex something. The lead Alex guy, Turner, yeah. Alex Turner. He's a fucking amazing songwriter. Um, and he's a really Their drummer's pretty dope. He's a really cool personality. They're all good musicians. Their bass player's but, good. Yeah, there's no one there who's there's no John Paul Jones, there's no John Bonham, there's that's no one true. there's no one there. Okay. You know, and that's what's missing from a lot of modern rock bands. It's like, dude, yes, you're very good at songwriting and the arrangements are cool, but the reason I would go for someone like The Vines or The Hives over Arctic Monkeys is cuz some of their songs in production and in writing, in execution, in arrangement Oh, you like dropped out that part really. You just threw more curveballs at me whereas with you Arctic don't think Monkeys AM has that. I think AM is their only album that has that. What about Humbug? No. <laughs> yeah, I guess I get what you're saying with Humbug. <laughs> Humbug actually. is like a Cage the Elephant album. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah, straightforward. Yeah. Okay, fine. I would say and AM probably is thing, their by the way, best album. Because sure. I think Kings of Leon, I would, put, like, I would put Kings of Leon as the best band of any of the bands we're talking about. I think they're... Over the Jack White? No, not... Well, how can you compare a band to a guy? Okay, fine. To, over the White Stripes? I would say the White no, Stripes. No, I are mean, better, I, yeah. w- I would. The White Stripes are a better band. Yeah, yeah. But Kings of Leon, it's almost apples and oranges because Kings of Leon stays in the mainstream lane so much, and Jack White's whole thing, he just plays with the blues. He so, made a thing mainstream. He did. I mean, I'm not saying that. He's the reason the Black Keys have a career. That's, that's why cool. I didn't fucking yeah. mention them. Yeah, I don't like the Black Keys very much. Right, but actually, <laughs> sort of like, hate the Black Keys. You know? But like the point is, is but, like, but, but what I'm saying is, each of those Kings bands of Leon, has a sound. Kings of Leon is. Kind of a remarkable band in the way they play together. Yeah. They're, they kind of are. I've seen them live and listening to them to on an album, like, the way they play. I remember somebody was talking Dude, about Crawl the Rolling Stones. Crawl is such a dope song. Was, somebody was talking about <laughs> the Rolling Stones, and, and it was like a music journalist from back in the day. And he was like, you know what's amazing about the Rolling Stones is this guy plays ahead of that guy. This yeah, guy they plays don't play in time They just They had a blend, though, that worked so well and in such a unique way. Kings of Leon kind of has that, and a lot of these other bands don't. Right. They're just bands who are good. I would say the good. Hives don't. Look, you can be a good player without being particularly unique. And I think a lot of these bands, like Arctic Monkeys, I'm not hearing too much unique shit. Honestly, the unique shit in AM, probably more a result of Josh Homme's production. Uh, he was just there. I don't. He wasn't actually the producer. Yeah, but if you were making an album, wouldn't you want Josh Homme to just be right, there? Right, but I think that there's a... I think their drummer is a big part of what makes them... Well, is a big part of why they'll be remembered very well. Their drummer's very good. He did that fucking post pop depression album with Iggy Pop too. Oh, he's a solid drummer, but he's, no, he's never... got a he's got a unique groove. I, I've never heard it. I have. I, mean, I don't know. Like I would say that his groove on well, you're on not a drummer, so stuff... man and Anna boo boo. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bass player. I don't know. <laughs> fucking, but like. I don't know. Either way, I think that just because of the fact that they remained relevant. I think uh, while being good, all of them are good. None of them underwhelm me, if that makes sense. Right? They all fit. That's what I was saying about Cage the Elephant, basically. Cage the Elephant, I couldn't give a shit about their rhythm section or their ba- or their guitar player. I couldn't give a shit about... I mean, Alex Turner is a cool guitar player. That's it. He's a rhythm guitar player. Cool. I don't even know who their lead... I'm with I would you there. Say, I have I would no say, idea who their lead I would is. say he's the, he's the personality. Right. Like, like that's the thing is it's really, really, really rare to find a band 
where the personality of the band sort of lives and breathes. I mean, Led Zeppelin's a great, like classic rock bands, of course. Led Zeppelin is the best example because Led Zeppelin's like the only band where you can argue every member is the greatest ever. They're just also a classic. They're an example everybody knows, so it's an easy example. But like modern day bands, honestly, Queens of the Stone Age, when they have Dave Grohl, like... Right. All you really need is two personalities who are just mind blowing. But then they good. still had Mark Lanigan and Nick Oliveri. So everyone had swag. Exactly. Uh, like, and Josh Homme consistently works with people. That's why it I like seems to work like on tours. Exactly. Jack White does it too. And they seem to understand this that, like, okay, yes. Even Meg White has technically, personality. Yeah, Meg White can whatever. But, you She's know, awesome. the personality is there. And yeah. it was enough for Jack White to work off of. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> with like they seem to choose based on personality but right. also they're choosing they have access to people who are that good okay but so we talked that's about, really fucking cool we talked about the fratellis the fratellis drummer and bassist are but that's how good they're part of that that is how good john fratelli is whole wave right? that, how good john fratelli is is that he makes the band seem good when his but drummer and bassist energy. are but yeah they like have their energy. bass players got some cool bass lines yeah, the drummer is the most boring part. Yeah, for sure. But I think John Fratelli even if you listen tells to him to, to keep it simple. I don't. I think he does that because he knows neither of them are that good. Dude, that's they true. Because if you listen yeah. to his solo stuff, yeah, it's or better. Coding Velvet Club yeah. when he has like one, my, like literally one of my favorite rhythm sections. John ever. Fratelli <laughs> might be <laughs> that rhythm section is so fucking good, dude. John Fratelli might be one of the greatest tragedies of modern music he's like or the, music in general I because make a movie he's about him. such a good songwriter, such an amazing lyricist so evocative emotionally and is just kind of forgotten uh and people are like oh you're the one that wrote uh da, 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 like every, people are like who are the fratellis and then you start doing that and they're like oh yeah i was at a hockey game i heard that song it's like oh man john fratelli is so fucking good as a song I, I always like he's to argue amazing alex turner versus him because they're they came out like the same time same oh, fratelli scene, over alex turner every day if i had to pick but everyone else one will always be like alex turner just because they know alex turner's not as good he's got fratelli is a better songwriter but for sure his I band agree. is boring right he's lucky that he's had really good production tony hoffer I assume he has a hand in the production because all the production that he does is good so if it's not produced by tony hoffer it's produced by him yeah, right, right. At literally every album. Yeah, they've I mean, never worked with another guy. He's it's the sounds are always great. You know, on that album, um, <laughs> in your own sweet time. That's uh, a great album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fucking amazing album. I think the production is sweet. I just wish it was a little dirtier in places and a little. He's trying to like not starve. It's like so <laughs> washy and modern, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's trying to not starve. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to not starve, too, but I'm not doing as good of a job but as like, he is. Yeah, exactly. Well, fair enough. But, like, <laughs> dude, it's funny because, like, to me, like, it's funny to me that the vines are forgotten. They're so cool. Because they're super good. La, da, 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 All three da, da, of them are good. Yeah. And they st- they're forgotten because the singer was apparently a pain in the ass and the other guys quit. A singer was a pain in the ass? Shocking, right? Whoa. But we like, have We have, by the way, we're going to release this as the absurd at some point. Like forty five minutes of me yelling at everyone else while recording the vocals for Enemy. Do you remember that? We have Josh Martinez kept the guy who I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was really angry that no one liked my vocal take for the song Enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I and gave so this we guy have, so much shit. We have a recording of me going on a hit to record this three times or something. Brian Johnson esque. <laughs> Is he the Beach Boys guy, Brian Johnson? No, no, that's what's his uh, name? Brian, Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson esque tirade, just throwing a tantrum on a plane like a toddler. Was I here? <laughs> yeah. Was I were... really fucked up or something? We all were, dude. That was okay, the making yeah. of that album. Just horrible bouts of cocaine, booze, and furious yeah. screaming in poverty. I've okay, wait. You yelled at me? I don't know who I would dude. I was just yelling for like 30 to 45 minutes, like Josh Martinez has it. Oh God. <laughs> He he showed it to me, and I was like, "Turn this off." <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I want it's it's just insane screaming, just like fuck you guys. Yeah, fuck this. I'm doing the best I fucking can. You guys don't fucking like the vocal take. Why don't you fucking sing? 
Yeah, I mean, it's hard to fucking take criticism, like we were saying. As we said, bringing it around full circle, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, but here's the thing, dude, is like... I know I've said it before, but I am so unbelievably ripped right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, those... Dude, sativa pro tabs well, on grassdoor.com. Well, smoked one of those joints wrapped in what was apparently keef. Keef and hash oil. Okay, well, I didn't know that, and we've been smoking that. Look, man. When Podcasting is, how 101. How is this different from every day of quarantine? It's not, but the point is, we're supposed to be making something. Actually, entertaining. it's different in that I haven't taken mushrooms yet. Right? <laughs> yeah, I haven't been shoving horrible drugs into my body yet. I've watched so many good movies. I have not. Really? I've written so many good songs. Though. I've actually done some good bass playing. I've been playing a lot of the major scale, dude. I just scratch just to my keep butt. myself from I just wanting to die. Scratch my butt and touch my face. But you know what I mean? Do you You've know been playing I mean? in the major. Can I scratch my butt and touch your face? I'd prefer you didn't, but... <laughs> I'd prefer if I did. I'd prefer you did answer my question about whether you've been playing in major more just because you're trying to not kill yourself. No. I, I have. I have not found... <laughs> <laughs> do you find that that's an, an effective therapy for your suicidal I'm just inclinations? Like, dude, if I'm going to do scale exercises, I've played the minor scale a thousand times. What I will say is that I am playing in modes and styles of music that I don't usually play because uh, right yeah, now I must Jesus. use... I, you might as well challenge yourself. That's I'm not playing in major to not kill myself. That Yeah. Nah, I'm actually writing some pretty depressing songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I'm like... But I'm playing in different modes and stuff. I'm just trying to get the mechanics up. Yeah. Because I feel like the best thing you can do with time off, quote-unquote, yeah, is... Well, okay, I'm not... I can live in the moment to some degree, but I can't live in the moment to the same degree where I'm like, like we've, I've like literally everyone who is in a rock band knows that you, at some point you've gone out, you've had a crazy night. Maybe you ended up with like a stranger. Or maybe you didn't, right? Maybe you ended up with your girlfriend. It doesn't matter. However your night ended, it was an ecstatic night, right? And the next morning, it, it, you played a sick Josh guitar Lundy, riff. ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you end up with a stranger. Maybe you end up with your girlfriend. It doesn't matter. Or no one. <laughs> maybe you end up with no one and you just hung with the, with the so boys. So let me, let me explain the this. Girls. The equivalency is that all are equal. Stranger, girlfriend, My and no one. My point is you've had a powerful experience. You hear that, Josh's girlfriend? From living outside your home. You know what I mean? And you came back home. You passed out. Woke up the next day. Cool people smoke cigarettes, by the way. Can we agree on this? Yeah, I think we. everyone knows the that. The fucking obviously. coolest people in the world smoke cigarettes. You wrote a cool guitar riff, though. Think about this. You know what I'm saying? Because all I'm saying is cool people smoke you cigarettes. Translated the, whatever in California speak, energy. Energy is the California you word gained for... I'm just that pointing night. out the cigarettes thing. <laughs> I think you, you should <laughs> probably talk about cigarettes for that a That you minute. translated it into a sick riff, right? Like cigarettes. That's what they do. They translate things. Awesome. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What were we even talking about? I don't know. You <laughs> fed me a weed pill and made me smoke more weed, and now I have no idea what's going on. Well, listen, we can agree, though, that virtual performances on it's the gonna internet are It's going to be a great clip shit, for Instagram, right? right? What? We can agree virtual performances on the internet are, are just boring what and a, I don't care, right? What a blunt trauma type of segue that was. It's just like the last thing I remember we were talking about. <laughs> I know that was probably like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't the know if we ever white. talked about that. No, you did. You brought it up. I was talking about the writer's room. What was I talking about? You started talking about how you fucking hated when people performed virtually on the internet. Yeah, I don't like this. Internet, hear me roar. Virtual performances over Instagram are not good. They're, what about acoustic? They're awkward. Ac that's acceptable. Okay. But also, I'm not going to turn it on, and I might do an I'll acoustic I'll, like, turn it on stream. for 30 seconds. Then what's the point? To be like, yay, someone's having, like, not, someone didn't kill themselves Great, today. and the person <laughs> performing just needs your validation. Imagine the person performing who gets less than 10 people to watch their live video over the whole course of, like, Been five there. songs. Why did you do it? Well, I, you've been there. No, I've never been there. We've been there. We've gone live. Nope. We've always had more than 10. We've never really? had less than 10. Yep. Are you sure? Positive. Even when we're on that stupid radio show? <laughs> yep. I just got smoke in my eye. Before we played the bootleg, you remember what I'm talking about? 
I'm just saying, if you're one of the musicians who has decided that your solution to this quarantine and lockdown is to <laughs> do a live broadcast on Instagram or Facebook of you playing your fucking mediocre songs. Hold on. Then you're lame. You're as boring to me as the people who are like, hey, band. I did a workout and then I filmed it and I put a time lapse on it and then I put it on you Instagram. You said acoustic was cool. That is... My girlfriend did do that, but technically it was yoga and that's not a workout. So And he also doesn't respect her for it exactly. at all. I mean, let's be honest. I don't respect anything my girlfriend does. I don't even <laughs> respect my girlfriend. <clears throat> I don't respect women. <laughs> Dude, so wait, but you said acoustic was okay. Cuz here's what I'll say. Acoustic's it's okay, Jake but I'm Pinto I'm not going to watch of it. The Adtones did a piano performance. Great. Where you just had him playing like jazz piano. I don't I blame put it on in the background for look, about ten minutes. Look, and I was I like, don't, "That's nice." Yeah, I don't blame any musician for doing it. I just would like to point out how fucking lame it is. That's why when we did a live stream, we just played Pac Man <laughs> with helmets. <laughs> yeah, Wait, and I, answer questions. I wish we, which was mostly, "Who the hell are you?" <laughs> and why are you on this feed? <laughs> I wish we would have saved that footage from our. From our uh, oh, did we not? No, we didn't. Uh oh, is a live stream that's yeah, now fuck, gone to the vagaries of history. God damn, dude! Are you kidding me, dude? Uh, why don't they put that on IGTV? It was too good. No, that's exactly a live stream should go on IGTV, not on your story, right? No, it's a live stream. Yeah, and then like it's, later, it's different than your story, leave, dude. When Elvis you go when went you go live look from through... Hawaii via satellite worldwide. Worldwide. Live? Yeah, worldwide. Wow. In what, like 1977, 1976? I'm just saying. And fucking everyone has a VHS cassette yeah. of it today. Elvis, I don't. My family has three. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't, I just. That's enough to cover you and some impoverished family in Colombia. I guess. Everyone has one. I guess there's a way to make it com compelling, but generally speaking, I probably don't even want to see your band in real okay, life. Okay, but what if you could and do... And so to <laughs> see it on Instagram is, like, a hundred times worse. Like, yeah. I'm voluntarily subjecting myself... I don't care about the phone speakers myself. either. That's the thing. It's like... It sounds like shit. It, it looks like you're in a room being filmed <laughs> by a phone. And, like, stop. We are not being filmed by phones. We have YouTube now. We can go look up epic live performances from bands we've that been, are way we've been, better. We've been uploading live performances. you got to do something unique. By the way, tune into my live stream tonight <laughs> at 9 p.m. The Absurd and Ben Forg. Don't Meet do it. Finally. I, try, I was like, yo, man, can you play a song on the Hi-Hats live stream? And he was like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. And eventually Gay. I ambushed him. Yeah. And I said on the stream that he was going to play a duet with our roommate Connor from Karma Vulture. He's not our roommate. Oh, he's no, an he's associate. Not. Yeah, our associate. We don't have roommates because and he, we live in a mansion. Rich. <laughs> Together. Yep. Without yeah. women. Paintings and tapestries in upon our walls. In a not gay way. Do you yeah, want some Fuck rest? it. Just not, that, not as much as you just poured. But All right. Yeah, that's good. But like, um, so they did a song about the Tiger King. And I got I, yep. I ambushed Ben by just saying they were going to do it, so then he had to do it. <laughs> he didn't have to do it. And then Connor and him did it. And then Connor said shit way worse in terms of political correctness than we have ever said on anyone's live stream or live ever. And I cracked my ass up at that because I was like, dude, Crack everyone my wants ass to, up, I did. Everyone wants to fucking give us shit. This, we, we let a stranger onto our feed for 10 fucking seconds. He's saying shit where I'm like, whoa. Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. Can't keep that guy fucking in his seat. Nope. Can't take him anywhere. Do you agree with that or am I, am I alone there? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, I remember being like, man, dude, I wouldn't. Ben wouldn't say that shit. Like, <laughs> I've said some shit, but not that shit. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but it was a live stream that's gone now, so... <laughs> yeah, it's into the ether. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't access it. All right. Access. On. Final topic. Ex access it. Access. Let's talk about movies. Access it. No. This is a music podcast. I'm not talking about Let's talk movies. about the music of film. I am not going to do that. Why? 
because I'm not talking about fucking movies. All right, you choose the final topic. Final topic Big is shot. music recommendations. <sighs> Friends, also, stop recording stuff that sounds shitty. That is not good. It's, not, it's good for nobody. You're, Look. You're forcing us into a position. Also, just for yourself, if I can give a public uh, service announcement along those lines. Can you do it without stuttering? No, because I'm Joe Biden. My name's Joe Bingo Bango Boingo, and <laughs> I'm a dog based pony soldier. <laughs> one, two, three, Joe.com. Jack. Fucking dude. <laughs> but, like, no, seriously, just as a public service announcement for yourself, look, one, don't be, never be satisfied with your oversatisfied. Hey, your I think if you're, work, okay, but, so we can, but hold on, hold on, we can kind of talk about this, so you'll be able to make this point, I promise. Uh, How do I know? How do you know anything? That's a fair point. Yeah. What if you're just a brain the other day that. and I was like, man, but, have I forgotten? Okay, so for bands who are just starting or look, I'm in a <laughs> I'm a fan of the idea that if you only have shitty equipment, you might as well do something with it, you know? There's a way to use it that just make it okay. sound cool. Yeah. Like, yo, I, this is shitty but it's cool, like car seat headrest. Right, but if you're a band who is established and people are used to hearing you with a lot of power live, Westerner, stop releasing things that do not sound up to snuff. Like it doesn't, it doesn't Damn. make any sense. If you're just starting, they ain't the only ones. But I agree. No, not at all. They're not the only ones. But, but if if you're just starting out and you need some fucking demos, like my band, a band I'm in, my band is actually it's actually called my band. It. Apparently the name's changing. Oh, that's good. Um, but <laughs> okay, if you're in that band, fucking get something out. Who cares? You know, like yeah, you can make it com- not completely shitty, Westerner. You can just talk to me, um, or anyone, or somebody. Yeah, just other than yourselves. Look, we work with Josh Martinez because not only is he good, but he's the fucking homie. Yeah, and we're broke as fuck. Right. And basically what we saw was an opportunity to help each other out by like, yo, man, if we make something also, really he's good, genuinely super good. Right. But if we make something we were, really good yeah. together, yeah, this will make him look good yeah. so he can make money. Yeah. It'll make think, us look good. You so know, we can make uh, money, right. So like if, if you are broke, find someone yeah. who knows more than yeah. you, who has something to gain by making something good. Right. Triangle Fire is another really good example of just like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. The music is so good. The live performance is so good, and then, and then we're gonna record the drums after we're gonna the guitars. Do it, we're gonna do it all ourselves, and it's like, God, you know, friends. I know because I personally reached out to him and was like, "Yo, man, I'll help you with this shit." You know, people who will help you. I used your mix. Who of know more than you at do? The end of our last podcast, right? I heard that, <laughs> and my mix wasn't even that good, but it, it was, was, was way okay. better than the one that came out. Like. For fuck's sake, you know? That was mastered by Lander, right? I think so. Yeah. Like, garbage. But, like, yo, just I feel consult- like we sound like assholes, but, like, I'm just we do, but to also, talk about... But, but, I'm just realistic. But, look, we also send things out to people and show it to people. People hate our shit because it sounds amateurish, and so when I hear shit that sounds more amateurish than our shit, right. I'm like, look, you aren't No, our shit anyone. doesn't sound, sound amateurish That's what anymore. we get told sometimes. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. Also, this is the public service our announcement. Our shit sounds oh, awesome. Here's, dude. So public service People announcement. People don't hate our shit for some. Do it amateurs. for your no fucking self. No one hates our shit because no one. Actually, you know who told me this was Just Haley. Saying. Haley from Rosechild told me this. She said, "She cray. Do it. She's. I love Haley. She do it from. Really? Would you marry her? <coughs> for a green card. To where? Candyland." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh fucking she once said she was like you should do it as cheap as you can. Yeah. But don't sacrifice hating it. Or don't sacrifice loving it when you're like years years from now. You know what this means? Right? You know what and this means? Cost benefit analysis, bitch. Just fucking get the best well, you okay, can. But, but point is Did you is, see the X I made? I was I was list I was dude, I, I so I did some mushrooms. I listened wow. to some of my favorite music How edgy. ever. And then at the end of the playlist, I had some new absurd stuff. Just four songs. 
Nice. How do we fit into the to the trippin' pl- psychedelic playlist, right? How do we? And generally, I was pretty stoked, except I, there were no, just a, no, no. Don't hold say on, this. Hold you, on. You, you shit. You're putting bad things into people's heads. There were like one or two elements Mm-mm. that I didn't like that nah. that drove me so fucking crazy. Yeah, you're wrong. By the way, I listened to him yesterday. Matter. My point is, is just saying. Now I'm like. Oh man, next time I know what we got to do. So like it's good that I know what I want to do better next time. Yeah. Right? So the theme But of, hold on, hold on. Point is is if you're going to make something forever to and make it's points. going to be the final version uh-huh. of something. Make sure it is the best possible version it could possibly be. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I was saying the cost benefit analysis thing because it's like, look, in Westerner's case and in Triangle Fire's case, uh, okay, so, for instance, with the most recent round of recordings that The Absurd did, I don't think we showed too many people the mixes before we were done with them because no. we kind of had a grasp on what we were doing, but the reason for that is because for Build the Wall, the, the former album, and then for the Motherless Child EP, we did that. And we showed it to a lot of people, and and the two EPs we did before that, right? Getting that people's opinions and and you and know, the live stuff, trying live to hear albums. what what other people think that we trust. Like, yeah, obviously you should do that. And this goes down to taking criticism again. It's like, look, you know, for Triangle Fire, I mean, we had a pretty personal relationship with them while that album was being produced. Right, amazing, <laughs> amazing. Right, yes, but amazing album in terms of the songwriting. I swear. Absolute shit album in terms of the production. <clears throat> Western are these new songs. A couple of the songs it works on. Pretty much not. No, I don't agree with that. Um, like three. No, I don't think so. Um, and But I hope they re-record all of them. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> none of them are good. Um, same with the Westerner stuff that's been coming out. It's just like, guys, like, I'm not saying talk to me or you. I'm saying talk to somebody. Here's the thing. You got to talk to somebody. You know, I'll be honest. You, no, you know people. If you've been around for longer than a year and your music is good, somebody will be willing to at least listen and be like, hey, here's what I think you should do. And if you don't right. listen to people who know better than you, you're an idiot. Or you're arrogant. Both, probably. Yeah. I, I uh, would say arrogance is the folly of idiots. Yeah. Like, seriously, there's no need to put out something shitty, especially when the songs are good, the live performance is good, the production side. Like, look, if you're in a position where you got to do it yourself, that's fine. But maybe... But that's a, that's when you should be asking for the most that's help. That's definitely when you should be asking because, by the way, somebody like me or you or the millions of other people like us um, would yeah. gladly be like, well, it's quarantine. I have nothing else to do. I guess I'll go over there and help you mix. Like, right, right. Show you what I know. I'm not even saying I'm an expert. And there's a bunch of people who aren't experts. Anybody who would work for free is not an expert. But like, if they're your friend and they know more than you yeah, do, no, take their they, advice. Even if they are an expert, take if they're your advice. friend, they might work for free. Yeah. And by the way, sometimes like with saying the do what I want, the ending is too long. It's like, who the fuck says that out of a personal animus? You know, that's not what that is. It's no. just saying. In terms of the song, like we can still be friends and not see eye to eye on the art. Wait, we if, if we're friends, can't we be real about what we think? Because here's the thing: why can't we just do what no, we want? Well, but but not only do I think other people should be fine and hopefully encouraging of criticisms like that. If people say stuff to me, I would say like twenty percent of the time I'm like, oh fuck, dude, that person was dead on. Right. right. And then about 80% of the time, I'm like, eh, they don't get it. I don't give a shit. But I'm still stoked they let me know because now I know what people think. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Like, I'm not upset. Well, and look, I'm, there's a, and there's I'm okay a, with the fact that I disagree. There's a time and place. No one wants somebody who comes around all the time and is just like, here's what's wrong with your living room. Here's what's wrong with your kitchen. Right, but a lot of times I, people will perceive here's what's wrong you as with that if you say it once. Yeah, absolutely. But there's, there's, Look, that's why art is an interesting arena because when it comes down to, like, how many times have you been in a position where people are like, oh, I love this song. You're at a social setting, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe a small gathering or a small party or whatever, and, like, five people are like, dude, I fucking love this song. And you're like, yeah, the melody's pretty boring, and honestly, the production sucks. And people are like, <laughs> yeah. 
it's like, oh, okay, I didn't. All right, well, and it's awkward to be in that position, but at the same time, everyone else was voicing their opinion. Why are you the bad guy for voicing the opinion? The honest truth is because, yeah, we were all just trying to have a good time, and you're the one who... I didn't realize showed that, us that, that disliking yeah. the thing on TV meant we couldn't have a good time, though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I agree with that completely. I've always been this guy my entire life. I thought life. we were here in this room, yeah. not on the TV. Yeah, yeah. My, you know my, I mean? my description of what just happened has been me and you for as long as we've been alive. Dude, I went like a great I've, metaphor. I've, I've done that so many times, and it's like, right, well, well, we can disagree. That's fine. But as soon as you say something like that, the reaction is just like, who the fuck do you think you are? And it's like, no, no one. I just, I was just, chilling. you guys were all <laughs> voicing your opinions. So I figured I'd I voice was like mine participating. Oh, I didn't agree with you. I s- guess I see the issue. Dude. I, I was over at uh, Deanna and Tiana's who I will miss forever. Our old neighbors, uh, across the way for a Super Bowl, And I think this is one of the most apt metaphors for what we're talking about. I l- grew up watching Super Bowls. My mom literally produced a couple of Super Bowl commercials. Yeah. She would, whenever we would, especially on the Super Bowl, but whenever we'd watch TV, she got a kick out of just explaining to me, like, the psychological mechanism of how an ad was selling something to me, Mm -hmm. right? By the way, something I'm so fucking grateful for, because, like, she kind of just accidentally taught me how to filter out bullshit. Maybe that was what, I don't know if that was what she was trying to do. But I'm sure if I ask, she'll say that, but, like, who knows, right? I think she just liked ads. Either way, so I love watching ads, and just being like, oh, that's a good ad, right? Like, I like the way that that's, that's funny. You know, like a Geico ad or whatever, right? Man, I got Fucking... criticized in college for making fun of ads. But so, like, I went to this party, and all these ads are just, like, selling you this, like, really insulting to your intelligence ideology or just, like, fucking, like, you know, like the this, this Slavoj Zizek point about how Coke never talks about how it tastes good. It's always just about how Coke is like no, a life good, force. Though. Yeah, it's like Coke is the real thing. It is enjoyment itself, right? Like, it's just like selling I mean, you I, this... I agree with all that. This sick sort of ideological carrot. And I just kept like being like, ah, dude, ah, doesn't this like fucking just like make you feel like uncomfortable that they're like trying to sell you shit in this right. way? And everyone's like, yo, man, can you like chill the fuck out? We're just trying to enjoy the commercial. <laughs> I it's got, like, dude, dude, exactly. It's like, this is literally like if in 1984, you're just like, dude, you ever think the daily hate is a little fucked up? And they're like, no, dude, we love the daily hate. Yeah, right. Shut the fuck up. Right, right, right. I got I the, in the exact same scenario, basically. I was in college and granted, I was a more miserable person than than i am now <laughs> i was yeah for but, sure i was then too <laughs> but also like we were all watching tv which i don't usually do so i'm hanging out with everybody watching tv yeah it's, an, it's same yeah. and the ads keep coming and i keep making fun of the ads and then eventually one of my buddies just goes you know you're a fucking negative dude you know that and i'm just <laughs> like this is mitch uh <laughs> yeah and i'm like for what? You're, dude, <laughs> you're a negative dude. Yeah, I'm like, okay, for what? And he's like, man, every, does every ad have to be a problem to you? I'm like, do you like the ads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm confused why you're on you, the side of the ads. Dude, are you a fan of the advertisements? Like, yeah, so we had to have a whole two hour conversation and Brian came to my defense. Do you remember when Glee was a thing? I think Brian was in a wheelchair then, too, actually. Oh, that's I, that's crazy. And he defended me. What a fucking mensch. Champ. All right, we got to end Wait, this. Wait, hold on. Do, do you we remember when Glee was a thing? And, yeah, but we got to wrap it up. Do you remember when Glee would do these, like, PSAs? No. Were you in, Okay, that's because you weren't in high school when Glee was a thing. You're, like, two years older than me. I think I was. Right? Okay, yeah. Fucking, I, no I don't think so. But, like, I remember when I was, like... Because I remember when I was a senior I think in I high was school. younger than that when Glee was a thing. But when I was a senior in high school, Glee did a couple campaigns. Right? Uh-huh. And I remember there was this one point where they did this campaign. They did this, like, two-minute ad. Okay. About how, like, saying the word retarded was wrong. Right? And... Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I've seen that. And yeah. And, and it's retarded. Dude, the fucking next fucking day, I went to school, and everyone was just like, dude, you know, it's, like, wrong to say retarded. And I was like, oh, really? Did you see that fucking ad, too? This is, is going to survive on YouTube for 30 seconds. 
the point. <laughs> I mean, I said retarded earlier and gay. But the, I mean, whatever. The point is, is it's like one day everyone in high school was calling Do you think everyone retarded. retarded people could be gay. And the next day. Do you? I think they can. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't make sense why they couldn't. If but like, gayness wasn't biological, then it wouldn't make sense. But it is. How do you know? Okay. Anyway, the point <laughs> is, is like fucking. Told you we had one day. Up, but you didn't one day me. at high school. You were on a Just think, dude. Here. Just think about this for a second. I, I mean, can't think. It's chill. I'm chill. Okay. I just can't think. No, no, no. You gave me too much booze. Uh, to sh- I didn't give you. You gave you gave the me booze. all the booze. Look. My point is, I one day in high school, my own mouth on my own will. everyone's you walking around me. saying retarded this, retarded fucking that. Fascist. One day later, after Glee has a fun, one fucking two minute ad, everyone at the high school feels ashamed and they're like, dude, this is the worst thing we've ever done. I can't believe we've been calling people retarded, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there like, isn't it weird that we just flipped on this overnight, right? Does that really represent an actual change? in the way you think about others, in the way that you communicate with others, in the way you interact with society? Well, or does this represent fucking brainwashing? I doubt I would love it if we were more kind or fucking retarded I, people. I doubt but that ch- saying that the word itself is wrong does not affect the way we treat retarded people I highly doubt that there's a gang of retards out there who are just like, you guys gotta stop using that word. Obviously, no. They're coached by their fucking parents. Because they're retarded. Have you seen those videos? They're just sitting there with their parents who's like, yo, tell them, Jimmy. And she's like, I, my whole life I've been called retarded. And then she's like, yeah, and he hated it. Oh, you can't be mocking retards on you. No, I'm mocking their fucking, the activist parents who fucking use their child's mental disability as a fucking cross to bear for some fucking political agenda. That's who I'm mocking. Fake news records, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? Like, no, if you want to fucking make a difference... No, I'm with you, of course. Make people treat each other better. I think what happened with gay people is great in that... I just would like to point out... We used to just out, say publicly that right gayness now, is wrong. Now everyone's cool like with it, out, and there's an actual change in the way we interact right with gay now, people. Right now, I would socially. like to point out, you're always fucking chasing after me for, yo, don't say that, don't do that, and you... What did I say that was wrong? Nothing, I'm, but in terms of perception, all the things. Like what? Like all of it. Like what? Like exactly just that what? whole last two-minute segment, five-minute segment, maybe whatever the hell it was. I'm saying that I'm just, if you want to actually saying, have you know, you empathy wanna, yeah, 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 for the we, mentally we disabled, both, we both agree. maybe... I'm just saying, every time you <laughs> come after me for being like, yo, dude, don't do that, it's like, yeah, I know what I'm saying. Dude, making the word retarded... I'm just saying, okay, so let's... Word non grata... Is literally Let's move shaming the concept of retarded retardation. podcast. You're shaming mentally re- retarded people. The retarded end. Okay, so what do we got? Music oh, recommendations. No, we don't really have any. Yeah. All right, so what are you listening to? Poop by butt. <laughs> Come on, give, give us like three songs. What about poop by that butt? you've been listening to? Okay. Poop <laughs> <laughs> by butt. Okay. okay, I got songs. I got songs. I got. One of them is poop. poop by butt. <laughs> and it's by it's by butt in the surfers. Butt in the holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> butt in the holes, ladies and gentlemen. Butt in the sweaty thighs. Their ragtag brand of surfer punk. <laughs> Hurry up. Um Mister, I wanna wrap this up. No, I was just saying we need to wrap it up. <laughs> I've, I've had to piss for like an hour. <laughs> I've had to piss for like two hours. <laughs> uh, I would say that I'm listening to The Fratellis um, in your own sweet time. Are you? Yes, I am. Um, and it is an amazing album because uh, John Fratelli is a ridiculously underrated and wonderful songwriter. His band is boring, but the production's amazing. I mean, the playing is all competent, it's just without personality, and especially in terms of the drummer. The bassist honestly has personality. Yeah, he's good. The drummer is just so boring that I wish he would not play in a band. Um, although, <laughs> on Flathead, a much older song... Yeah, on their first album, he has personality. Oh, we haven't had audio for I don't even know how long. This died. Whatever, this, we got GoPro audio. This dead. What happened? Must have, batteries must have died. Looks like it's turning on. Now loading. Wonder when that died. Uh, 
I'm getting an AC adapter for it in the mail. Well, anyway, the Fratelli's... Who cares? Um, we got camera audio, so we'll be fine. Yeah, that's really enjoyable to listen to. It's something. It is something. All right, so the Fratelli's uh, whatever, blah 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 um, Yak, The Pursuit of Momentary Happiness. It's an amazing album. Um, kind of everything you want out of a rock album. Lots of punky vibes, lots of... Uh, yeah, we don't need these. Who gives a shit? Yep, battery's dead. Well, Fratelli's, Yak, and... Um, say I'm listening to... Uh, other stuff, you know. I've been listening to uh, fucking jazz music, like Herbie Hancock. Right? What's the point of even continuing? I don't give a shit about this anymore. Goodbye. Yeah, peace. <laughs> <laughs> waka waka. Oh, I gotta piss uh. so bad. It's 